up, y'all. Kofi Kingston here, and I would love to have a drink with wrestling on the rocks, depending on what that drink is, preferably non-alcoholic, you know? How's it going? I'm telling you for your game. And Soda. I would love to have a drink with wrestling on the rocks. Maple syrup. Bella. I would never have a drink with wrestling on the rocks. Welcome to another Wrestling on the Rocks. I am at Ref Marsh. We are at WOTR the show. With me today, per use on a Wednesday, we got at Beard Sports, the sports beard right here. Go ahead and say hello, man. Hey! And special guest referee. I'm kidding. Uh, Justin Time 211. Justin Time's coming through. How you doing, Justin? Ding, ding, ding. Since you're the ref, but I'm, yeah. I'll do the bell this time. Yeah. So, Ring the bell. Bring the bell. Ring the bell. I'm Dario Cueto. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as soon as I knew we were going to need someone to chime in here uh, this week, and I knew it was going to be probably an earlier show, I immediately said, can't be Bishop. Let's get Justin. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Bishop. <laughs> That's right. Bishop from at TW takes terrible wrestling takes podcast. This is a direct shot at you, man. Direct fire. Shots <laughs> fired. Yeah. I, I got nothing against you, Bishop, but I don't want to say anything bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a good dude. Friend of the show, but yeah. I am happy to have you guys uh, both on today to have a drink with me. Let's start with something simple and then we'll get into it. Let's do a little what's in your glass. Uh, just, you go first. Yeah, Is Justin, it, you got to go first. Okay, well, I got a big cold glass of Mountain Dew. Ooh, sounds delicious. Are they out of the watermelon Mountain Dews in your area? They actually don't sell them anymore. It's disappointing. I never I had feel, it. I feel oh, like it's... Mountain Dew is constantly doing that, coming out with new variations of their Mountain Dew that are a huge hit every time, and then they go, okay, that's enough of that. They came out with a gingerbread one recently, and it's very strange. <laughs> I, I I can't believe you tried it. I, I mean, did. It, it tastes like, <laughs> apparently it tastes like ribbon candy. It, it sounds fucking awful. Quite yeah, frankly. I can't, it's I can't very, imagine. Very, I can't imagine a good version a, of that. What it's got a fucking ad exec taste, was like? But it's also got, it's got ribbon candy taste, but it's also got like a, like a big red kind of flavor and it's weird so you said like peppermint it tastes like peppermint yeah like okay. cinnamon and stuff it's weird okay that is if you say ribbon funny. candy i'm thinking peppermint, peppermint. Oh. yeah um that makes sense yeah yeah um so i i'm just gonna go i have uh yeah. rockstar recovery and a yeti so i had some hashing sure. i'm good <laughs> that's like that's like <laughs> half a bottle of whiskey is, so, is the recovery specific to like, like why? What's so the branding? It doesn't have. It's Rockstar. Yeah, but it's me? but it's called Recovery. You said yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here, if you want to see the glass. So yeah. What's the up. what's the deal with so it? It's just a juice, really. It's an orange flavor, and huh. it has like twenty five calories, and it's just got like calcium, potassium, niacin, vitamin B. Probably none of that shit is any good for you, but um, and it's like a cup of, it's got electrolytes and taurin and. So the idea is like a, it's like a hangover cure, probably, is the idea. Yeah, except for I didn't drink enough to need a hangover. It's just something I like in the morning because it's like hydrating and it's like a cup of coffee, but it's not a cup of coffee. So, I'm kind of weaning myself off of caffeine, honestly, and not. I went a long time without having soda and stuff, and I that really helped me keep weight down. Mm. Um, and now i can't seem to lose a single pound of weight so <laughs> um so yeah uh I, that's why i'm doing it um, right. but i have like high well, I blood i don't think that you need to be hung over to have it but i think that was just the idea i was trying to figure out why it was called recovery i think that's the marketing idea is the hangover well, recovery but like you said it's good for a lot of other things it's good it's definitely for hydrating and yeah, if you're it sounds like it's like a gator weed kind of thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah in a can yeah. Uh, uh, except for this isn't polluting the ocean because I crush it and recycle it. But um, yeah, I just uh, 
I don't know, man. I had a friend that worked at the town pump. That's literally what they call them in Montana. And they had like Mountain Dew slushies on. And this is before like Code Red or anything. There was just Mountain Dew yeah. flavored Mountain Dew when I was in high yeah. school. <laughs> I would I would drink those Mountain Dew slushies, which were like the the probably the yeah. most caffeinated thing. And I just I think I kind of burned myself out of them when I was a kid. I just had so much. So yeah, I did the same thing. I worked for Discovery Zone back in the day. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was one of the last ever Discovery Zones. It was called Kid Zone, and we had Mountain Dew slush, and I had one every single day I went into work. Dude, you know we probably worked next to each other because you're talking about the Discovery Zone in the Northway Mall That's here in one, Anchorage. Yeah. yeah. So I worked at the Sun Coast in the Northway Mall. Oh, I'm sure time. I saw you. Oh, we probably I probably sold you a movie. This. So. Yeah, I went in Sun Coast a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Did you? Um, you probably sold me some Britney Spears CDs. <laughs> I also worked at the Sam Goody in the mall the too. <laughs> I was the assistant manager there. So, so when Justin talks about retail, I know about work in retail, bro. Mm -hmm. I worked retail. So I got a part-time job when I was still active duty. So like 98 or 99, I started working at the Northway mall and I, mm -hmm. I ended up becoming full-time there. When did you work there? In like 2000. In fact, I left in 2001 to take a job working for an electrical uh, parts place. Well, so I know I was working there right out of high school. So it would have been 202 at the very least, if not 201 before I left, I might have started there. But okay. I can also say that for the couple years before then, I was going to that mall all the time because it was within walking distance. Yeah. So I was out of there by 2001. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Brady, who was my best man, managed the Sam, the Suncoast at Northway until basically the Suncoast at Northway. I think they moved him to Diamond. Mm. But that was kind of like that was when they knew the writing on the wall was yeah, happening with those. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll tell you here in Alaska, be, just because that, like how costly the Internet can be for certain people and stuff like that. Uh, there's still a market for a store like that here. People, mm -hmm. someone could make a lot of money. It could yep. be me because I have like 4,000 freaking movies on DVD. <laughs> so, right. And then when Brady well, died, I inherited his library. So, Oh, that's kind of neat. I mean, it's sad, but kind of neat. Uh, I'm having a truly extra hard cider, a little, little something refreshing for the afternoon drink. But I'm having it in my Stone Cold koozie. So, you know. Nice. It'll yeah, I gotta you find that beer. Gotta try to get that beer and try it. Mm -hmm. I want to try that IPA so bad. Yeah, me too. Yeah. But, uh, for Thanksgiving, I was able to have some because um, I was out in San Diego seeing my grandparents, and they sell it in San Diego. The One of the few places in San Diego that sells it is the liquor store that is two blocks from my grandparents' house. So every time I go out there, I try and swing by there and grab at least a four-pack. Hold on. Nice. El Segundo Brewing Company is in San Diego. Are they not? <laughs> I thought they were out of uh, – are they not out of – well, El Segundo, but I believe they're out of San Diego. I thought they <laughs> like were like you Vegas or something. literally visit the brewing place when you go see your parents. They're not all over the place out there, though, because I've no, been to I'm some places. You could, no, you could visit where they make the El Segundo Stone Cold IPA, Broken Skull IPA. You could actually visit the, the brewery. I believe it is there. Go find out. Go find out on the map. I'm looking uh, it up right now. Look it up. We need to know. Yeah, I uh, believe <laughs> But also for Thanksgiving weekend, a lot of stuff was not open. So uh, it may not oh, yeah. have been the trip to do it. However, I got more trips planned. We can definitely go back. Well, uh, you're not far from San Diego, right? Isn't that just a couple hours? Yeah, it's just a little drive. I mean, I'm not going to drive there and back the same day. But either way, guys, let's get into it a little bit. We haven't talked since Survivor Series Watch Along. Wow. Yeah, we haven't been on. We did it. We did the week off for Thanksgiving. We were there was a possibility that I was going to do a Thanksgiving episode with my brother. He did not make it out uh, to San Diego as well, so uh, it didn't happen. So yeah, we're we're still reeling off of what happened at Survivor Series and the aftermath. Justin, what did you think of Survivor Series overall? To be honest with you. For me, it was probably one of the more boring shows to me. 
I did not really enjoy it. I think the main event really to me was the only match I really enjoyed out of the entire show. Right, the rest just did, the rest just did nothing for me. I'm kicking you off right now. I thought it was fantastic. I thought a lot, a lot of great matches with with top talent. It just it's like I've been saying for a while. I think that as much as people want to pretend that Royal Rumble is the casual fan pay-per-view or that WrestleMania is for the casual fan, I don't think that's true at all. I think Survivor Series is the single casual fan-based pay-per-view. Royal Rumble and uh, WrestleMania have elements to draw in a casual fan and a mainstream audience. That's why there's always celebrities in WrestleMania, because they want the viewership to be boosted by it. But WrestleMania is a payoff of major storylines throughout the entire year. And Royal Rumble, all the things that you think of as being enjoyable in the Royal Rumble as a casual fan is actually a hardcore fan perspective. Because it's always like, oh, you never know who's going to be in the Rumble. Well, if you don't watch regularly, you don't know if that person's not been there regularly. So Carlito showing up to a non, non-hardcore non fan, they didn't know that he hadn't been there in years. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But Survivor we, we Series want- is literally champion versus champion. Here's our top talent having top tier matches for almost no reason at all. <laughs> Just look at it and enjoy it, you know? Well, we watched it together, so I don't I don't have a I don't want to talk about it because we watched it together. I oh yeah, we're like, not gonna break it down. I was just asking how yeah, Justin yeah. liked it. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm really interested to hear what he has to say about it. I I I'll tell you for me, just like I enjoyed it because I like we watched it together. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. I like I I enjoyed that part of it. It was more enjoyable. One, because then I have, it's like you're, it, you're there with me. Mm-hmm. It would have been, the only thing that would have made it cooler is if you were in my living room. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, and then I can just bounce stuff off of you. And then, <clears throat> you know what uh, Ref Marsh does really well, Justin, I feel, and it's like his, his superpower is he's super positive. And he always finds a lot of good in the stuff that we're watching. And uh, I think it's only human to trend negative and look, at what you didn't like i think Mm. we do it so much now in society that we kind of forget why we're watching what we're watching so Mm. uh i love that about his uh (laughs) my dogs i'm so sorry (laughs) hey hey, gentle you you better be being gentle guys okay good boys anyway uh i'm so sorry we had a we had a thing the other day and it stressed me out so when my dogs fight with each other, it, it's not good. Um, but uh, they're just playing and they're just they're being funny. <clears throat> they're being okay. I'm not worried. Um, so yeah, I just love that aspect about being a friend with him. And now that we share, the, you know, kind of the wrestling fandom as a commonality, I, I don't have, I don't feel like I have to agree with everything he has to say. But like, uh, I will say, you know. Um, if, if you find yourself complaining about the stuff you're watching more than than mm-hmm. you actually watch it it may not be worth watching anymore you, for you you know it might be it might be worth going on to something else just anyway my yeah. my I see a lot of people complain having become I I want to tell uh ref marsh we we keep saying we're part of the IWC but I feel like we're the anti IWC because we don't really trend negative <laughs> I think if we were super negative, we'd probably have 75 times the followers, right? It I just agree. what sells now. But I'll tell you what, for me, it's not what makes a healthy life. Mm-hmm. So I just feel like if I, if I, if I would, you know, it's okay to rant or complain about something that you don't like and that you're passionate about because you want to see it get better or this, that, or the other. That, that I'm not trying to take away. I, I think healthy discord is good. Um, the keyword there being healthy again, like you just said, yeah. and, and, and each individual person has to make that decision for themselves. Like, is this, am I letting this become, is this a positive distraction, you know, or is this become, is this starting to feel like work or is this not fun or yada, yada, yada. And yeah. uh, I, uh, I, I don't know. Was, uh, Ref Marsh knows this about me and for you. I, I don't know how aware, but I'm a big Pat McAfee fan and Pat's a really positive guy. And I like that about Pat. Like, you can skew negative, and he just does not want to do that. And uh, 
And I also love what I love about him is that he, he knows he has it real good because he grew up poor and he wasn't wealthy and uh, he knows his life is real great and he appreciates it and he talks about it. And that's a, uh, I, anytime I can throw in Pat McAfee on our show, I'm always going to talk about him because I, I, I believe in the guy so much. He, he and, and he kind of helps me get me going, you know, like, and, and, and really getting engaged in this sort of thing. So I just like, for me that I just, like I bring in a new perspective, like a new fan's perspective, even though I'm an old guy and I did watch like Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant and and Randy Macho Man Savage and Ricky the Dragon Steampoke and uh, and one of my faves, Roddy Piper. I mean, he's in one of the best movies of all time too. John Carpenter, They Live, great greatest movie ever. Um, uh, and probably what, wouldn't you say, Ref Marsh, one of the greatest li- uh, one-liners ever in a movie? Oh, yeah. I'm I'm here to chew bubble gum and kick ass and I'm all out of bubble gum. Like oh, yeah. all out of bubble gum. there are so few one liners <laughs> that are that good yeah, in movies, you know. And it's that feels like a Roddy thing too. I feel like Roddy showed up with that in his pocket. You know what I mean? I feel like no one wrote that for him. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but it feels <laughs> like something that he would say. Documentary about Roddy Piper. Yeah. That um that I it's on Hulu. If you don't get Hulu, I'll 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 figure out a way that you can watch my Hulu. Um, but, uh, um, it, he talks about it and I, and the, and the only reason I say watch it is cause I don't remember specifically what he said. I, I do believe they wrote it or he, he, or like you said, I, he came up with it. It was like a wrestling quip. Like yeah. it was something he said. So I think you might be right, but I don't want to say yay or nay because I just can't remember. Yeah. It just goes so, that way. But yeah, no, I think you're, you could be correct. But again, I don't want to say watch the, it's free on Hulu. So I watched the one on him. It was really good. And what was really tough is I'm actually a big fan of Rich Eisen too. His last kind of interview was on Rich Eisen and he, whatever was ailing him, um, you know, um, was like catching up to him. And he was like, and uh, he, he, I remember watching that interview being like, man, he's, and he's kind of in bad shape right there. And, and Rich was like an awesome, you know, these guys, you know, these guys have been doing it for years that interviewing these people are like masters of their craft. He knew he, he didn't have a well human being by him. And so he just, you know, he did such a, he didn't make them look bad and just was a really, you know, if you're going to go down, it just was an unfortunate thing. The only thing I could describe interview i could ever describe i don't know if you remember a few years back if you're mma guy chuck liddell was on like some local texas thing and he was on like some painkillers or he was going through a rough patch and he was uh kind of out of it and it was sort of like that except for roddy was not a drug abuser or anything like that so yeah yeah well, let's anyway. get back on track here so yeah. uh survivor series i do want to mention at least uh briefly something that notable happened there both natty and randy orton set guinness records for yeah. most pay-per-views uh, appearances. So uh, ooh, ooh, Randy Orton works. had 177, which yeah. was originally held by Kane at 176. Yeah. So he broke that, Randy Orton did. And uh, Natalia got 68 uh, female Natalia, pay-per-view Natalia. appearances. Natalia and Hart. Okay. Yeah. Good on and, her. 68. Yeah. Just yeah, I, I wrote I down the beat, Randy though. Orton thing to talk about that, um, and then it's not here, so that's funny. Um, mm. yeah, yeah, that's incredible. But, but they both, yeah. That's incredible. Don't we always talk about Randy Orton being kind of like that stable vet? He's taken over for The Undertaker, and yet yeah, he's been to more pay-per-views than The Undertaker. <laughs> and Kane, because Kane was seen yeah. that way for a long time, because Undertaker became a little bit more of a... Um, yeah, Even yeah. in the last number of years, he was only showing up a couple of times where Kane right. was still regular up until he wasn't regular. You know what I mean? Like he was regular for a long, long time when Undertaker until had already he became the mayor that. of that Tennessee town or whatever. Well, there was a short period of time where he was mayor and full time on the roster. It I believe was crazy. he is still a mayor. I believe he's still the, the mayor. I think he, he is, news. but he's not full time is what I was saying that there was a short stint where he was mayor and full time where he was still showing up every week on raw. Oh yeah. He's not wrestling anymore though. Is he, is he Kane Kane retire, retire? Did he not? Or is he I like, I don't think he had a proper retirement, but I think that okay. I don't think he's wrestling. What were you gonna say, Justin? I think he has like 
kind of like silently retired. I think, yeah. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. He's kind of successful in his second career too. Like it seems like he could probably run for governor of Tennessee or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> seems well liked by his constituents. He seems exactly. like, so like, I mean, I don't know anything about the guys, Paul. I don't care. Like I don't live in Tennessee. So yeah. <laughs> um, I saw, I don't know if you saw it. Um, did you want, he's talking about, he, he does just real quick, uh, on Kane, he does still make signing appearances. He made an appearance this past weekend as Kane, and Mm -hmm. he's also co-running a wrestling training school out in Knoxville. The J, what is it? JP GW or something like that. It's like the, the, it's the Tom Pritchard and Glenn Jacobs wrestling school so a wrestling academy so just kind of cool that he's able to be a mayor and balance those other things is like just goes to show you that the level of work ethic those guys had to be on the top in the wwe spills out into the after wwe time and they just i don't think i don't think there is such thing as a successful lazy wrestler i mean correct it just feels like that job is all about hustle like i always kind of feel like a lazy piece of shit when I'm when I'm hearing about the you know how these wrestlers came up and what they were living <laughs> off of, especially like the Stone Cold era, the the Attitude Era guys that were you know I mean it's a lot better now because there's more you know there's a bigger fan base right there's a oh, yeah. you know there's more regional shows there's you know it's a much bigger you have you have more than one national product right so. I mean, yeah. that hasn't been the case always either. So, yeah, I mean, and then yeah. you go back, I was like, uh, to go back to Roddy Piper, there was some some magazine thing I had seen once where he had gotten the most matches in a year and it was like 500 something. He had done no less than like two matches a, a day almost. Yeah. And it was that's, insane. That's insanity. That, you know, that that means like on one <laughs> weekend, he wrestled like 10 or 15 times. Yeah. And those are back in the, and he's playing the heel and he's playing it like, no one ever has played it since and he's getting stabbed by people because that you know you know there are chuckleheads that thought it was like not scripted you know and again like um i I understand there was a code too like i i think it helped the sport when they came out and said yeah it's not this it's this but they're still getting, you know, that guy who slapped John Stossel, you know, he's, that's how they slap. I mean, when you hear those thumps in the ring, like I almost am like, dude, just punch me. I'd rather get punched than slapped across the chest. <laughs> like that's like a whip for some of them guys. Randy Orton, you like if he smacked me in the chest, I would be on my ass. Yeah. I would probably be like, man, why did you just punch me in the face? I would have much rather that. You know? <laughs> Like, seriously, like, I'll take a punch to the face. Like, uh, I don't know, man. I, I Anyway, I, you know, Ref Marsh and I talk about this all the time. Like, Orton being the elder statesman, pretty incredible. I do yeah. think, uh, going to the kayfabe concept you threw out there, I do think the breaking down of, K, of kayfabe, although there's still a level of kayfabe, and if you listen to Sam Roberts, he talks about new kayfabe, and there's all that. I think that part of the reason why we see such bad promos regularly nowadays is because they don't stay in character any longer than they're on TV. And they used to stay in character all the time. And I think that they're not as in tune with the improv of their character. I wanted to ask you about this because I'm so glad you brought this up. This leads into what, okay. So Becky Lynch hosts this show survivor series. Her emotional interview, like mm-hmm. the BET one, but really the one with the, I mean, Justin, I don't know what you thought. Like she, like the visceral react, like it was, it was that real Becky, whatever her real name is. I'm going to assume her first real name is Becky. It's Rebecca. And yeah, whatever, Rebecca. or Rebecca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, she goes by Becky though. That's a, that's a, it, it's not a made up name. I, I have an aunt mm-hmm. named Rebecca. Nobody ever called her Rebecca except for my grandfather. Everybody called her Becky and she prefers Beck. Okay, anyway. um, So they did that. And I honestly, like, you know, I was kind of on the fence about her. And then, you know, I said, no, she's cool. And I like her. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
and, you, and she's won me over, but m more back thing. And then you and I have talked a lot about the feud with her. And I, I was like, aren't they like best friends? And you're like, oh no, they're actually not best friends. And nobody likes Charlotte, blah, blah, blah. So I actually thought that was kind of a real visceral moment where that was that person talking about that match. Like it was not the character big time Bex. It, and mm -hmm. I agree with you. I do feel like it does feel like they're, the threshold uh, between what's real and fake is kind of bl gone with the promo sometimes because leading into Monday Night Raw, uh, Liv Morgan did her promo on her before that five person match. And I was at, I actually didn't agree that they used that, that clip. They could have used any clip of her talking about Charlotte, like bitching about Charlotte. There were other ones where she was much more toned down about Charlotte. You know what I'm saying? But the simple fact that she not, she did two things that I thought, Whoa, uh, she says, she uses the clip of of Becky being really emotional after the shark. Like you could, it was a, it was a. I hated the match because I thought Charlotte was not good. Like it felt like she was just trying to, to beat her, like, and she and you could tell like from the the jump she was not being cooperative. Uh, she felt like she was trying to take over the match pretty much. Yeah, she literally was not letting Becky do. And there was no, uh, there was literally no sustained offense from Be from Becky that whole match. I've never watched a match where the winner basically never was like in the lead. Like she literally was like, here's Becky. It was like Charlotte beating her around like a sprinkler. Anyway, yeah, even when Becky got any little bit of offense, yeah. it was just Charlotte getting more and more in there, and it just yeah. felt ridiculous. Yeah, I was that was not a fan of that match because of 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 how I felt Charlotte performed. Because I could see, like, visually, it looked like Becky was frustrated. But anyway, um, just specifically with this promo that Liv ran, and then she talked about how how much Becky gets paid and how some of her friends had to leave. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, I almost, I was like, really? Like, you're, I mean, have you guys ran out of ideas? I felt like... Or is that because that's uh, that felt and look that felt real like that. I mean, that did not feel fake. I don't know how you felt about that ref marsh. But when I heard that, I was like, what? That was like the only thing I remember from Ron now. I mean, there was a lot going on other things. But like that was I was like, really? So just the whole promo and then that like what she said about her friends are all gone because, you know, uh, how much. And I was like, whoa. Because I don't think any of those wrestlers get paid all that much money in retrospect to other sports and stuff. Oh, uh, considered to other sports, absolutely not. Because what was it? I just saw something where some dude was getting a $130 million contract with some sports team and someone else was yeah. getting like a $350 million 10-year yeah. contract. Yeah, yeah. And the, the biggest player. ones, yeah, and the biggest ones in WWE are typically like five or six million. Yeah, um, yeah. so Max Scherzer just signed a three-year deal. He's 36. Okay, that's not. We don't need to go into that. I was just saying, like, to to be relative to the sports world, yeah, absolutely, they're much much lower. Uh, Grim Reaper coming through the chat saying hello. Cheers to Grim Reaper coming through. Grim. Mm. But what I was saying, uh, um, in that promo, and I think it's cool that we talk about it because we're not going to recap every single segment. Obviously, yeah. there's been a lot that's happened, but there are some highlights we want to talk about. But specifically, the Becky Live one. I think the reason the line was in there is because of the gross misunderstanding by the general populace of the fan base that think that a budget cut means you have to stop spending here. And then if anything else that's there is where the money went and budgets don't really work they the way. Wrote it. You don't oh, yeah. that was from her. I, cause I'll tell you what, like even her reaction, I was like, I don't think that was part of the script. I think it was, and I think that Becky wants it that way, and I think that, okay. that Becky's also a top-level performer. I think the reason they had to use the clip of Becky crying is because the week before, Becky was mocking Liv for almost crying. No, no, I know. I, 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 I'm just saying, like, I almost, because of, and I'll just say this, th that I've not ever seen an interview that felt like a UFC fight, like, that I, from WWE, ever until that moment i mean like th yeah. i feel like becky was in a real fight she got out of that fight 
and she felt like she was in a real fight and she talked about it like yeah. she was in a real fight i mean exactly. she didn't put on a character face at all that was that person going this was the most difficult thing i've done i mean i literally fought from behind the whole time i had no offense the my the partner wouldn't you know they don't come out and say she's a piece of shit for not working with me in the ring but like anybody that once you start learning it about wrestling and stuff like that it, and you watch them go through this stuff you're like oh yeah like the great matches where the fans are like this is awesome like that could have gone on another hour and i don't think the fans would have because i i was like this is brutal this is yeah. brutal like this is physically feels brutal it feels like charlotte's trying to beat her up in the ring and not yeah. like work with her at all so okay yeah, i'm gonna I mean, stop like, you there because yeah, yeah 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 uh uh but the reason that you would use that promo is because of all those things being what I feel is also realistic. You have Liv trying to fight back against Becky. You have her point out, you cry too. And then that's what the great comeback with Becky, like you yeah. wouldn't understand what it's like to be that emotional after a big match. You've never had one. And like Grim Reaper saying in the chat, they're trying so hard to make Becky a heel. What? And that's the other thing. They have to try hard to make Becky a heel because she's a fan it's favorite, like, no matter how you, how you yeah, cut it. It's like Stone Cold. I mean, you know, yep. you could make him a heel. Absolutely. And it says, uh, what makes someone look like a heel? Question mark. He goes, uh, being rich and costing other people their jobs. Yeah. Being at the top make you. And Becky said that when she was first coming up and as even uh, the man, she said, you're uh, a hero in the chase, but a villain in in the, the victory. Uh, and then Grimmer says, whatever sticks to the wall at this point. Justin, uh, let's get let's hear from you. What do you think about all this? See, I with the match from Survivor Series, it felt so weird to me because it felt like they were trying to make it feel like a shoot after a while because even then they were if they had so much disdain for each other it didn't feel like they were gonna work a match at all but they started like calling spots and all this other shit and it just felt like why it felt like almost like the whole disdain for each other thing was kind of nonsense because it just didn't feel like the way they just were like they, the way they called spots, the way they just tried to make it seem like it felt like a shoot to me is what really just threw me off with the whole match. And then, but Becky's emotion at the end, I felt like was like legit almost because I don't think she was just how much Charlotte's gotten to her and annoyed the hell out of her that she have was going to have that emotion. Have you ever worked with someone that you didn't like and done things to make their job harder? but made it look like you did your job just fine? Not really, actually. All right. Have you ever experienced that from the other side? Has anyone no, ever Dexter. made your job much harder? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's just no. Kind of weird. Not, not everybody's a sociopath, Barsh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me but, shit this guy's <laughs> coffee. I don't uh, like him. Right. I but have so, seen it done, though. I have yeah. seen it done. And that's the, I think that I think that's the where you get the blurred line there of you saying like they tried so hard to make it look like a shoot, but they're clearly working together on certain things. There's a certain level where you can make someone else's job incredibly hard, but try to yeah. do enough on your own side that you can say, "Look, it wasn't me. That I was. Actually, I just my thing." That match looked like a shoot to me. It, it looked was, like shoot. it was a mess. It, 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 <laughs> it actually, I actually thought it was a shoot. I mean, I'll just say yeah. it. Like I felt like Charlotte was told exactly what was going to happen and she didn't like any part of it and yeah. she was going to fight on every single move in the ring and not one time did she ever give becky the upper hand in that match like she just could not she recovered so quick i was like oh my god like you have to play this up a little bit more because she it, it looked bad because she was like you know the only wrestler that could pull off the you you can't hit me and hurt me is the Hulk Hogan you know what I'm saying like you just yeah. walk through the thing Th that gimmick was over with him okay it, it works good for good for big guys for a while uh and I had there was something I wanted to talk about Omos be, but I, I don't want to get off topic but I just feel like like you know that felt like a shoot that felt real I I feel like there was that match felt real it was bad, but it was bad because you could tell, like, one person was working really hard to, to, to try to 
do an entertaining match. And one person was trying to work really hard to look, say, I'm an impenetrable force and you can't mm-hmm. stop me and you can't move me. I'm going to probably lose to you. But like, you know, they had to throw in, I don't even know that they needed to throw in Becky holding the rope. I mean, I think she could have probably yeah. won. No, because they did, Um, they, they, I think they, I think Charlotte, made that that ending could have meant something it could have meant something big and i think charlotte threw that away on smackdown but we'll talk about that in just a minute justin what did you think though about the live promo on raw yeah i i mean i've been a big fan of live i think she's had to she's really been needing to to step it up a lot like when it especially when it comes to promos like but i think this was good i to me the whole her using the becky crying thing didn't really bug me at all the using the whole my friends got fired thing kind of left a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth but i get what? where they came from with it what do you mean by the sour taste in your mouth like I, I, it does it just feels weird that you would use all these releases and turn them into a story again like it doesn't it just feels weird I disagree because I think that the complaint that other people have is when they make the releases and pretend that they didn't release anybody, you know what I mean? Like, and Becky brought it up too. Like, and like, like Grim Reaper said, you've got to make Becky a heel in this story. And Becky brings it up. You've let down embarrassed your friends. They don't even work here. Liv's retort is they don't work here because you're so greedy. Your check has to be so big that they couldn't afford them anymore, which isn't really what's going on. But the, but it is the narrative of the internet. They say like like because I saw someone post that stupid thing with um, they did the the Dallas WrestleMania uh, little spot show and they put up a big title like a foam title that had the Dallas mm-hmm. Stadium logo on there, and someone said people got fired for so someone could make this monstrosity, and I was like whether or not it was good looking or not, no one got fired, not a single human being lost their job because the budget didn't coordinate with a big foam belt. You know what I mean? Those are different realities. And so the the concept that people have that – because they'll even say it there. How could this person lose their job but they have this other person? Can you tell me this person losing their job really made it so they could afford this other thing? None of that is the actual conversation happening in a business. Mm -hmm. So they just use the narrative that the dirt sheets are perpetuating consistently to, to make Becky look like a bitch. Yeah, that's why no, it didn't I, bother me. Yeah, so I I thought it was low hanging fruit. I mean, Ju- Justin, mm-hmm. it seemed like he didn't like it either. So I I feel like you know the point you made about them not saying anything about releases or them actually saying I think it's the whole it, you're gonna glad hand some of the ha- fan base. You're gonna piss the other one off. I think that's just mm-hmm. it's inevitable. The more controversy, I think they. I think they have a, a, I think Vince actually has a flawed view of the wrestling business now. And, and some of these techniques that have worked for years, I think he will never come off them. Um, and I think that they, they, a lot of that stuff could change when you are the standard bearer, you can do whatever you want. So like, to me, I'm surprised they don't take more risks in other areas like long form, you know, I mean, Mm. like, why are the Marvel movies popular? People are following these storylines over the course of like 15 years now. Right. Mm. So, I mean, this ties into like, I wanted to bring up, you know, I don't know if you heard the rumor that they might be selling the WWE did you read that? That's, that's been a talking point for almost a year and a half now. People have been thinking that. It sounds like, like, Oh yeah, it was just something that was I saw in print, and they said, "Oh, look, you know, one of the, the, you know, everybody's talking about the ratings or this, that, or the other. It, they're the most profitable they've ever been. So, mm-hmm. regardless of of whatever the WWE LLC, whatever is 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 a Fortune 500 company that yes. and, you know the people I'm hearing, but like if Disney, whatever, like buy it." You know, that could change a little. I am going to assume, though, a lot of the people that run the business will stick around the business because, you know, they're not going to want to. Disney doesn't have wrestling people. But uh, anyway, I just was curious, the the stuff I'd heard. But, like, 
it just feels like you probably don't need to do her salary thing in there. I, I, I actually, I'll say this. I loved it. I loved it. When I heard it, I, I liked it. Like, I was like, this is awesome. Like, I can't believe she's, she's big time Bex. It works into the big time Bex concept. Yeah, big time box or whatever. I actually really liked Liv Morgan's promo. Loved I, it. I wasn't saying I was surprised. Like I said, I don't know they needed it to have the crying one. They or they could have used something. That specific interview, I just thought that was such a visceral, real interview with the real person, not the wrestler. Um, mm-hmm. I I kind of thought, oh, I'm kind of surprised they're using this again. Maybe they thought it was such good acting because I don't think there was any acting at all in that. That was like the least acted promo ever. But um, yeah, yeah, no one's saying that the promo is bad. I think we all loved the promo. We're just talking about the couple of talking points that people had complaining outside of what was a tremendous promo. That's the other thing that's really funny too, is that like the promo's fucking fantastic. People are hyped up about it. And at the other end of it, they're like, can I find a couple things I wasn't real pleased with? I think we can write a whole article on that one thing and not the overarching story that's been going on for weeks or the incredible baby face boost that Liv got by saying those things. And the apparently visceral reaction they even got from Becky hearing those things that confused on whether or not it was, should have been said or not. Like, I think it was tremendous all any way you cut it. Yeah. And that's what I, I think that's the overall theme of this, this episode one of wrestling on the rocks is Mm -hmm. like, you know, we have a different perspective. You're going to skew a little bit more pot. Like, why aren't we talking about what we liked? And Mm -hmm. I, like I said, the, uh, I was just, I honestly was just blown away by those things. And uh, I, again, I could have been, I could have been, I don't think that promo is any less effective with a different video of Becky. I'm sure they have something of her crying somewhere, you know, whatever. I thought she was going to be like crying when she won the belt. Like I, I didn't, I was like, they're showing this. Like I was like, (laughs) Whoa. Uh, And then with, you know, as far as the, the money comment, I love that. I thought that was awesome. I was, I didn't even tie it. Honestly, it didn't even make sense. You know, like I didn't tie to the releases because like I've just been reading so much about releases, but Oh, um, speaking of which, Sounds like the AEW will, you know, is going to have his first, you know, bunch of releases coming up here in the next month or so because contracts yeah. and stuff, and they have a saturated roster, and so yeah. it sounds like, you know, some of those so people. that's what Becky did on the outside of Survivor Series, boosting Liv Morgan in an incredible fashion. Uh, even the I loved because we didn't get to talk about it the raw before that with the promo where Becky's like, "Are you going to cry?" And Liv just socking her. I love how the camera zoomed in. And right as she's upset, she also starts to smile because Becky wants this fiery Liv. Becky's doing everything she can in this program to make sure that everyone knows that Liv Morgan is not only a contender, but she's a big baby face and this is a big fight. Re- fast forward a little bit or, you know, side by side. What is Charlotte doing on the other side of this this thing? She's, I don't know how. And as much as we talk about everything positive, we're going to be a little bit negative on this one. I don't understand how anyone. Before you go down the Charlotte road, did you hear her old man split? I read that. I read that they stopped following each other on Twitter, but I don't know what that's supposed to mean to me. Yeah, that was all I seen about it, too. And I have no idea what that signifies at all. I mean, it could be. It could be that they split, but I will say. That should largely be uh, uh, irrelevant to what you're doing on, on TV. Well, but exactly. hold on, though. Didn't we have the conspiracy theory that Charlotte was trying to, like, bully her way out of her contract so she could leave and go to AEW and be with old boy? I mean, it, it felt, I mean, honestly. The theory was out there for the sure. the most delusional human being on the planet. It's or, 21 degrees outside. Oh, shut up, Siri. Uh, she's uh, probably, she's either one of the most delusional people on the planet or she literally is trying to get it out of her, you know, out of her contract. Like, I feel like her actions speak louder than words. Like, uh, what I saw with her match, because we're still kind of, is that she was super uncooperative. And I just, like, she's a heel and she doesn't want to get anybody over. Yeah, like, so let's talk about that. no one so likes her. The program going into her with Tony... This, yeah. this promo she cut with Michael Cole, she goes out there and says, 
I didn't lose the match. The ref was terrible and Becky's not good. So automatically she's saying, yeah, I'm worse. Like, so the, like no one looks good in this. So yeah. the fault is on the referee. The heat's on the referee. And now yeah. the, the Becky's not, a, not good. So losing to her means nothing, which also means that Charlotte losing to Becky means nothing when she could have just as easily gone out there and said for someone like Becky, who says that she doesn't respect me or my family. She sure did take a page right out of our book and was the most conniving person that day. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like be out smarted. It's okay to be outsmarted. You got the better of me this time by being so conniving. I underestimated yeah. just how conniving you could be because I didn't think you'd take something right out of our own playbook, a flair trademark, if you will. But yeah, she didn't. Yeah. She said the referee's stupid. So if the referee was stupid and that's why you lost, that means you couldn't outsmart the stupid referee. So now you're dumber than a dumb ref. <laughs> I love the logic, but dude, you're not wrong. Like you should. That's how I felt. I feel like whoever is writing for her also wants her to be like not successful or she's just doing it on her own and no one will work with her because I will tell you, like, it feels like I, everything you said initially, I was like, yeah, why didn't you just do that? Like, yeah. Why didn't you just say that? Cause then you go, Oh, I think it's just, I think it's turned into just, she's, I think that whoever's writing for her, even if she's doing it on her own, I think she thinks this is going to work. And that's not, there's no not way, there's no way, Justin, that you, I, because <laughs> there's no way, unless she's completely lives in fucking rainbow land or she's on so much drugs that she just doesn't have any concept of her surroundings. She might because, because of her ego. Her ego is so up. Or is so is it really in real life? We think she's that out of it. I mean, if that's she the might case, be. I feel she so might bad. be because I, to me, she just feels like she has this big ass ego on her that mm -hmm. it's just, she's got the whole thing of, oh, oh, my dad was the greatest of all time. Because every time you turn around, you hear somebody talking about that Ric Flair is the greatest of all time. I for like personally wouldn't put him in my top 10 if I actually did it, but she sees all that. And she's like, well, that means I'm the greatest. Like immediately. I don't have to do, do, do anything right. I'm just Ric Flair's daughter. I'm my ego's here. Like also it's just... on her, on interviews that she's done where she's not in character, even when she's not in a program with Becky, she has been saying for the past two years that she made Becky famous. Like in, in all genuineness, she's like, I spent 18 months laying on my back to make a real, to make a new star. And so she has always taken credit for Becky, even when she's in these interviews where she's talking about her real life family and stuff. And I don't think she's been working the whole time. Maybe she has. I don't believe it. So I do think that the ego could be there. But yeah. then you have Tony Storm come out. And now she tells Tony Storm, I don't even know who you are. And yeah. then she outsmarts. Tony Storm making her look stupid by throwing a pie in her face twice. So now, even if Charlotte beats Tony, you beat a nobody who's dumb. And you're someone so yeah. dumb, you can't outsmart a dumb referee. So now everyone <laughs> looks absolutely <laughs> stupid in this program. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand what they're doing there. It make, Again, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, I actually thought Tony's in it, intro and stuff was great. And I like, it was I awesome. I go, I don't know who this is, but she's cool. I want to see more of her. I like the little thing and yeah, go yeah. get her. Go get it, girl. You're spunky and you're going to do something. Yes, and exactly. Everything Tony brought to the table was good and elevating. And yeah. then Charlotte started speaking and brought everything down. Yeah, it's, it's, it is a little bit like she's the black hole of human emotion on the screen. <laughs> like, it is a little bit like that. Like, I, I will, I am, I, I did want to say this, but I am going to, I am going to start referring to Charlotte Flair time on Raw. Uh, and you know, I love Pat, mm. but even Pat, I think Pat's like, I don't know what to do with this because I fucking, she's not likable. I'm like, I can fucking Pat can't make you likable. You're not likable. Um, That's pretty nice. So like, I'll just like, I'm going to start referring to time, that time as, oh, I got to go take a shit. You know, it's time yeah. to go take <laughs> It's, this is the time I can miss watching this. You know, I don't need to see it. Uh, and I'm not going to go back and watch it. That's what I'm saying. Like, if if no, like, if like nobody likes what you're doing, like, nobody. And I don't even know, like, are, is she selling merch? Because, like, if I'm a, mm -hmm. if, even if I'm a little girl, like, 
I like everybody on the roster more than her. There's just not, and again, I'm not trying to be mean to her. Like, I'm sure she's a great person in real life, whatever. I mean, I mean, she's not a good person if that ego is that, if that's her real ego. Like, like, no way. Like, you are, you are a delusional person. I don't think it makes her a bad person. I don't think she does things maliciously hoping to destroy people, but I don't think she's looking out for anybody. I think that, I think because the idea is that, is that like Becky even talked about it uh, in that Ariel Hawani uh, uh, interview. She's like, because Charlotte's thing was like, if I was a man doing this, would anyone complain? And Becky's like, no one man or woman is behaving this way, but her. And so people go into these programs trying to see, how can we make magic where everything is amazing and everyone enjoys it? Where Charlotte approaches things like, how do I make sure I am the only one people are talking about? She's not trying to create magic with everyone. She's trying to do what she wants to do for her and herself. I don't think her thought is, I think I can destroy this person by not working with them. I think the thought is, how do I go through this program and still make sure everything's about me and I don't look weak for even a second? Like, it's not a back and forth. It's not an overall, let's make this whole program great. It's, I need to make sure that I am talked about as the greatest of all time, no matter what. And I think that, so I wouldn't say I think that she's a bad person. I do think that there is every possibility her ego is a little out of control and it's it's making some of these segments uh, yeah. not as good as they could be. Not as good yeah, as she's I mean, capable of being. So I didn't even, I mean, it's it's, I'll just say this again you're an artist in breaking this down because like, I just was like, Oh, this is not, Oh, the, Oh, this is cool. Nah, no, it's terrible. And, and it's, and, and every, every time I, it goes, ah, it's terrible. It coincides with Charlotte doing what you were saying. I, you just contextualized it and, and made it so uh, vivid. And it's like, Oh yeah, that, okay. Oh, that's why. I, oh yeah. And then like, it's so funny to hear how you would do it differently because it would be like, oh my God, she would actually be doing well. Like she would be likable almost, you know what I'm or saying? Or at least understandable. Like I think the even, even an asshole heel who says that I'm the best and I got cheated can yeah. still acknowledge that someone out cheated them and make them yeah. both look good. You know what I mean? Yeah. You cheated better than me that day. And that's wild because I'm a really good cheater and I couldn't do it. But you ch- out cheated me and I'm good at it. So I'm going to have to be a better cheater than you next time, right? But that's not what she did. She goes, you're a bad cheater. That referee is stupid. And I'm so dumb. I couldn't, I couldn't outdo either of you. And you're like, the fuck is this? Yeah, Who's yeah. better here? You can't even lose to Becky Lynch, arguably the biggest star in the entire wrestling industry. Mainstream yeah. appeal. I think Roman and Becky are constantly fighting for number one and number two. And I think that any given month, it switches back and forth. And you can't even acknowledge that a loss to Becky could mean something. Well, wouldn't it help her too? Wouldn't it yes. help her character if she <laughs> actually lost? Like then, you know, the little girl that does like her, that likes her confidence or whatever. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like how you described it. If you're doing all this negative stuff around your character and nobody likes you, you're literally doing more detriment to your character that if you were if you were doing things just you could still be doing them along the same lines that's what blows me away is you're not even trying to get her to do anything niceties or anything it's not like trying to turn her into a baby face i i literally think if you could turn her into a baby face with uh, what the damage she's done i would say you're the greatest writer of all time because like how could you take i mean i've never seen a character where i mean you know if uh, Seth Rollins is a heel. There's a lot of Seth Rollins fans. Obviously, Roman Reigns is the heel of all heels right now, the bloodline. And there's a lot of people wearing the head of the table shirt and whatever. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm not going to say that some of those demographics are women between the ages of 29 and 30. <laughs> hey, it's understandable. It is understandable. I've seen that man myself and been like, Fuck. yeah. Like I, I, I get, I get why he might be popular. Um, outside of the fact that, because you know. I personally don't think he's all that great in the ring, but whatever. I mean, he's the best on the roster, he says. So, um, <clears throat> but anyway, um, I just, uh, I don't know where I was going with this, to be honest with you. I just, right. we'll, like, we'll, we'll chime in with Justin real quick. Justin, what do you think about everything we're throwing out here? Yeah, uh, just, there's, there's so many things. Like, I've just been so off Charlotte 
completely. Like, she ruins everything, like, lately for me. Like, I that's why I can't get into matches with her, no matter what it is. And I feel like everybody else has to suffer for it. And it sucks, because when this match with Tony happens, like, yeah, am I I'm really going to be into it. it at that point? Like, it sucks. Like... I'm real nervous about it because I think that Tony should absolutely take the title off of Becky or not Becky. Tony should absolutely take the title off of Charlotte because I think that there's so much potential for Tony. And I think Tony being made to look like an absolute idiot, Charlotte grabbed a pie in front of her and slowly walked she, over and put it in Tony's face a second time. And I'm like, fucking yeah, come on. Saying, the first time, the first time I understand because it was quick she got out of the ring, she grabbed the pie, and then Tony slid out and she hit her with the pie. And I'm like, all right, I understand. Now you go over there and you do the same to her. But she just stood there. And then Charlotte walked over and just nonchalantly put the other pie in her face. And I'm yeah. like, she looks like an idiot just standing there. Like, hit her in the face. Do something. Like, don't yeah. just stand there. They're not building well, seen, uh, the fan well, I've seen on Twitter today, like, the day that happened, was well now everybody in the IWC's got some material to work with and I'm like you freaking nasty thirsty freaking people knock it off yeah that's true yeah no I mean it's just I'm nervous about the program because I think that Tony's going in giving everything she's got to make it seem like something that we should be excited for and Charlotte's making sure that no matter what she does she makes Tony look absolutely stupid and I don't want Tony coming out on the other end having to rebuild like everyone else who's in a Charlotte program. No one's come out of a Charlotte program and not had to completely rebuild their entire well, stature. Be- Becky Lynch. Right? Which made Becky Lynch into the man because she was the one person who figured out how- – she was the only person who figured out how to get a Charlotte match out of Charlotte that makes people focus on Becky because Charlotte has been – this number one for so long that people are nervous of trying to make the match about them. You know what I mean? I mean, especially if I had never seen her wrestle before and survivor series, I would be like, man, this is the most selfish person I've ever seen in the ring. If that's the first match you come in and watching her, like I would, and it sucks because like the women's stable is like some of the best wrestling are, that's yeah. going on is them right now. And that's Tony Storm really... is so good that before she even signed with WWE, she was one of the independents that I was following before there was a big independent boom. She yeah. was someone who I saw in the UK on a little clip and was like, she's really good and has a ton of star power. Like is she she's Australian awesome. though. Yes. Yeah. She sounded Australian. I was going to say, I yeah. didn't know her. But like I, you know, I can definitely tell the difference between a Cockney and an Australian. Yeah, you know, there's 17 other like so accents. much so that when WWE put together NXT UK and they created an NXT UK title, I referred to it as a joke as the Tony Storm title because so I said clearly they made this title so they can sign Tony, bring her in, and make her a champion. She was and the second person to win it. Well, the first person to win it was Rhea Ripley. And then Tony took it off Rhea. But I was shocked because the the I think the title match for the title was Tony and Rhea. Rhea won. And I was like, this makes no sense. I thought it was the Tony title. I was they eventually got there. Rematch. but I was a little, you know, we're talking about all these problems with Charlotte. And I, remember I told you I was a little bummed that I felt like some of the female roster from SmackDown, you know, I was going to miss getting to see Bianca Belair and blah, blah, blah all the time. And uh, um, you were like, yeah, you know, but Raw's a bigger show. They got, like, more time. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, all the good ones are on Monday night. Does that, like, look at – I'm not saying Sasha Banks, and there's some really good women on on SmackDown still. But, like, it feels like they, they're they just the ones that can tolerate her working with Charlotte because she's going to get her airtime. And mm-hmm. – to give it to her and wait until so sports beer gets to see bailey when she comes back and oscar it's gonna yeah be yeah both both of which i have i i'm familiar with uh but i have not seen them wrestle at all oh my yeah. god you'll love uh, both of them well, yeah, amazing so uh, Jeremy in time in the chat says, that's why I'm so uninterested in Charlotte. Uh, anything Charlotte is involved in because I know one of the, half of the program is only focused on making herself look like a star. And that's what it seems like, but uh, well, but yeah, not but to I rail guess. on it too much. I am excited about Tony being in a TV program. Not excited about this one. Yeah. If they got cojones on one? them. Are they wrestling day one? I think so. I think okay. that's what it is. Um, yeah, I don't really know. They haven't really been announced yet. 
No, That's they. Point. I thought they did. I thought they announced the day one stuff, or they were. Yeah, again, they're doing a really piss poor job of promoting their own events. That's a good point. That could even happen next SmackDown. But I'll be honest with you. I think Tony should take the title because I think the only way you come out of looking that stupid is by winning yeah. clean in the ring. Yeah. And then uh, Charlotte having to answer for that. But the thing is, if Charlotte can't lose to Becky and make it look like a big deal, she's not going to lose to Tony and make it look like yeah. a big deal. You know what I mean? So either so way. So this is the they, there's one match we know of, Justin, and it is Biggie, Seth Rollins, and Kevin Owens. KO in that triple threat for the WWE. Now, um, somebody said I saw something wrestle. I think our friends at WrestleMania. Okay. I don't know, and they get there from like six different hundred sources, but uh, that Vince is not convinced that Big E can be the WWE champ and yada, 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 and that that this might be the time that he he removes it from him and like Rollins, it'll probably be Rollins, right? Because, well, what I, so I also saw this today. They said, well, they might make it KO because his contract is up at the end of January. And like, hey, KO, we'll let you be the WWE champion. Like, and he could, he could pull it off, right? Oh, yeah. Like, he could pull it off. He seems like a super capable guy. And I has a, he was a universal champion for an entire year. Yeah. So, like, that's, I'm asking you guys, like, when I say it's like a question, I, cause I, again, yeah. I just gave back Justin. this year. So, SummerSlam. I wasn't even back for WrestleMania, which yeah, I'm really I bummed out, you know. But like, I definitely I think even if they give it to KO, I wouldn't be surprised if they gave it to Kevin Owens, but like just to try to keep him. But I do have a weird feeling it's going to end up on Rollins. I don't know why they don't see Big E as champion material. Like he's well, he's done, to, in my honest opinion done had a better reign than kofi did kofi to Mm. me still has this this notch in it that i just can't give it like too much of a thumbs up biggies for some reason i can because it's just it's given me a lot to just go this has been like really good and i want to see him go longer with it like he's all the all the media like stuff he does also, mm-hmm. like, I don't get how you don't see that and go, yeah, this man definitely can be the face of your company. Like, yeah, I agree. The guy looks like an Adonis. He's awesome in the ring. He's super, yeah. like, positivity. That's such a good message. I, I, I love the guy. Yeah, he's he's walking charisma. He's handsome looking man. Like, you know, I haven't seen him do a bad promo. Like the guy's awesome. Uh, yeah. I I will be severely let down if they don't let him be, you know, in the mix. He doesn't have to retain it, but like immediate rematch wins it back or whatever. I wouldn't mind. Uh, I, but I will tell you, and I wanted to ask you guys this because it's related to this. Do you guys feel like Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins are kind of like the Triple H and Stephanie? And I feel like they kind of have that pull there yes actually i think they absolutely have that pull because i think that they're doing things in that company that they haven't seen since triple h and stephanie since they haven't seen since stone cold i think the man shirts sold uh uh, like the austin 316 shirts did and they didn't expect that to happen uh i think that they absolutely have a ton of pull because they have put in so much and they are turning out so much on the other end those people are passionate what I love about this particular match, if we're going to talk about it. Well, that's what I'm just saying. Do you, you know, here's my question to you. Do you think that because of that poll, Seth Rollins will be the, the title? He'll win it out of this. Do you, are you asking if I think that Seth Rollins has the political pull to, to say he wants to be champion? Or if because he is viewed so positively by the company that they'll put the championship on him? I, I think the political yes. poll thing, but... I, okay. I agree with the second part too. I you I okay. think you can answer both. <laughs> yes, but okay. I think both too. Okay, I don't. I don't think that Seth Rollins Could cares. I think cares, Seth Rollins cares about an awful lot. But I don't think Seth Rollins is looking at Big E as a champion and saying that should be me. I think Seth Rollins loves being a part of what he's doing. I think he loves every minute of what he's doing. This dude, they have it in one of the Chronicles or the 24s. 
he wins the Universal Championship. He goes out and does a spot, and the crowd boos him. And he goes backstage and cries. And he goes, Seth. I don't know why they're... Seth Rollins. He goes, I don't know why they're booing me. He's like, I do so much. And he goes, and I'm trying so hard. And he goes, and they're just booing me. And he's like, and I don't know what to change. And I think that... I don't think he feels he has to be champion to be important. And I think that that's very evident in what he's done the past, what, two years since he's been champion? I don't think he would ever pull to say, make me champion. I think he would try to prove that he should be champion by his work rate. But I don't think he would ever ask to have the title taken off of someone who's put in a ton of effort and say, put it on me. I don't think he's that type of a guy. I think he's got the pull to do that, but I just don't think he wants to do it. That's fair. Potentially he could be in that conversation where he could potentially have the power to, to, or pull to say it should be, but I don't think he ever would speak up like that. Mm -hmm. However, I do think the company is super behind him. I think the company has every reason to be super behind KO. He's always been a team player and performed on such a high level. And I also think that the dirt sheets don't know what they're talking about most of the time. And I don't think Vince McMahon believes that Biggie's not doing his job. I think that everyone understands exactly what Biggie is doing. He gets huge reactions. Biggie versus Drew had the crowd booing Drew. And I don't think Vince McMahon didn't hear that. And I think Vince McMahon thinks Drew is one of his biggest baby faces. I think the dirt sheets are being worked. And I think that what we have here is a triple threat of three people with a ton of believability in walking away with that title, which makes this match interesting. What's but you do any validity to the thing where they like, Hey, we want to keep you Kevin Owens. Like, sure. That could happen for sure. I think they did that with FTR. FTR even talked about that, that when they said they didn't want to renew their, their contract, one of the things they said is we'll put the titles back on you guys. And they said, that's, that's fine. We've had the title several times before. That's not, that's not why we want to leave. FTR. Uh, they're a tag team that you haven't seen. Okay. They're great though. They're fantastic. They're like callback. They're kind of like old school brain busters, but Being they, uh, tag team I've never seen here. Did you see that Jeff Hardy wants to reunite with his brother? And he said either at AEW or WWE. He didn't care. He I didn't see like, that. Yeah. No, me neither, but I can definitely see. I always thought that Jeff to me originally was trying to just hold out until he had the opportunity to leave. So he could go be with his brother. But even I can say lately that Jeff Hardy's looked better. So even if his brother came back, yeah. I don't see yeah. WWE blackballing him to where he's they're never going to want him back because he left to AEW. Yeah, no, no and but he's talked a lot Hardy's. of shit. He's talked a lot of shit, which could yeah, be no, you're, Now we're talking about Matt Hardy yeah. now, the guy yeah. who's not in WWE. Yeah. yeah. Okay, because you said Jeff. So, okay, uh, I this kind of related to what happened in the ring too because – the whole Sami Zayn thing, we thought Jeff Hardy may have gotten a chance at the Universal title. And to be honest with you, I kind of liked, I was kind of intrigued by it. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Crazy thing is, I thought the ending was almost a botch. Because I thought mm -hmm. Jeff was supposed to like land on the apron and then he fell off anyway. I was like, whoa, wait a second here. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I think Sami Zayn was supposed to win. I mean, I think that was part of the plan, but I know what you're talking about. Um, yeah. yeah, I just, uh, um, yeah, that was know. a real interesting thing. I just was curious. Because he, so his contract did run out. Jeff's contract did run out since Matt has been in AEW, and he re-signed with WWE. So I got the impression that he wasn't as concerned about going to WWE and tagging with his brother. But if he's saying he'd like to do that now, I thought that this he had is said. Jeff saying he wants yeah, to do it. Yeah. That's what I mean. Uh, I thought that Jeff re signing was a sign that. Because he'd said when he signed this one that he wanted to finish out his career in WWE because that's. Well, maybe, was the maybe, whole thing. maybe he knew he already said that on the record when he said this. And just to keep it ambiguous for the wrestling fans who want to complain about everything, it sounds like they may not have remembered he said what he said you know years ago or whatever after he signed his wwe I i'm gonna assume the money's better at wwe the travel the accommodations everything is better than any other wrestling thing uh 
And so I'm going to, I'm going to assume that if you give any wrestler a choice, they probably want to be at WWE over AEW. Uh, you know, I'm sure people would debate that because of like creative stuff or whatever, but I mean, if you get paid we've, more and you get better accommodations, you know, why we've heard you? that some of the contracts that the AEW is putting out are crazy contracts. And that's why some of the guys are going there because it's crazy guaranteed money. Oh yeah. The, yeah. the WWE, they just, ex- yeah. That's just the, the mold of WCW. I mean, that's yes. what they did. Yeah. Turner did. We're just pay you set money. And these yeah. guys were like, you know, getting used to being paid by the event and the merch and all that. So like, and I, you know, obviously wrestlers are probably lower paid. I probably the only comparison is a UFC fighter. Right. I mean, as far as money, not getting paid a lot of money and this, that, yeah. and the other, um, you know, I mean, now with the television stuff, like that's where the money comes in. Right. So, yeah, I mean, that's the other thing too. Like, I think if you just try to compare, cause you were talking about WWE versus other sports, but other sports there's like all these other things like the wwe is basically it's its own entity so like if it goes to a an arena asked to rent that arena and pay for that you know it has the arena cost and so you know it's a lot different than like if it's a sports franchise and it's their arena and stuff like they don't move they're playing around the country and stuff and then one of the things that aew does too is they allow their talent to make money in any other venue that they want to make it so i do think it's a bit peculiar that people are on these aew contracts saying they're making great money but they're making a ton of indie shows and i just can't imagine why a wrestler would do that being honest i you know what i mean i would i think it's all about money I think the wrestlers can, if they, if they could do it in the WWE, they'd be doing it. You know what I'm saying? Like if they so, could go do. But if I'm making 750 grand a year, why am I getting, why am I taking a bunch of $3,000 side I mean, gigs? Aren't some of those Japanese things that, I mean, some of those are not like those guys in the Mexican shows. I, I think some of that money is like better than the stuff in America. As far as some of them, yeah, but a lot of these guys are just doing random, like a Vegas show or some show in Ohio or yeah, some I random like meet and greet. Like star, the I meet guess. and greets, I guess. I guess I get the meet and greets because you're not taking bumps, but like the people who are having wrestling matches in some of these ones, I don't get because I'm like, you're making three to five grand, maybe well, ten, ask, and you could get seriously ask, injured. Well, let me ask you this: if you're one of those guys that has to do those other shows because you need the money or, or want the money, isn't it also about building your brand? So people, more people see you out there wrestling. So it really could be just about building your brand. So that's that true guy, too. It's a lot of guys who aren't on TV regularly. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Like if it's a, you like, Oh, I, but you're like, Oh, I saw that guy at a house show and he was awesome. And then when you see him on, you know, raw for the first time or NXT or whatever, you know, you're like, oh, I know this guy. He's cool. I mean, it, you know, and that's the thing too. Like, you know, I talked, you know, you know, I talked about the development of, you know, the young talent and stuff like that. And they created the NXT because, you know, the regional stuff was kind of falling apart for the, you know, you know, WWE being the monster it is, you know, probably hurt the a lot of the local smaller shows for a long time. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure it didn't help when it basically gobbled up a lot of the regional stuff. So, you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's interesting. I, 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 we kind of got off topic, but I was, you know, what do you guys, how do you feel about Jeff and Matt Hardy? I'd love to see the Hardy boys back. I'd love to see them retire in the WWE as a tag team, like champions. It would be so awesome. The Hall of Fame for sure. Well, they're in the, are, are they not? I think they are in the Hall of Fame. No, they're not they're yet. Not. They will be. They will be. Yes. For sure. Yeah. They will be. Um, to be honest, I have no desire to see them as a tag team again, personally. I think that, I think everything I've seen from Matt Hardy in the past two years, three years, even, even before he left WWE, it wasn't something that you go, this guy should keep wrestling for a long time. When he was offered a position backstage, I remember hearing that and thinking, I think that's a great role for him. And he said, I still want to wrestle. He goes to AEW to wrestle. And every single match I've seen since then, I've thought to myself, why is he still doing this? Like I've, I've not once yeah. thought he's should keep wrestling. Jeff is putting on stellar stuff. Jeff's still doing great, but I don't think Matt's got it the way that Jeff does. And I think that Matt's a better mind than he is a physical wrestler. Justin, what are you going to say? 
Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. I don't know what it is about Matt Hardy lately. Like, his AEW stuff has been awful. Like, ever since his broken stuff, nothing has come close to that in mm-hmm. Impact. Like, nothing's come close to that. Now, even nowadays, like, it's... Like, I don't really... Yeah, I think I kind of agree with the whole... I don't really know if I really even want to see him back as a team again. But I do think that they eventually will end up in the Hall of Fame together, but... Yes. What about, what about and... this scenario? What about if, uh, like, the MVP Bobby Lashley thing, right? What if uh, Matt is kind of like Jeff's MVP and comes back as, like, a manager and then, you know, like, he gets I don't think Matt's ego would have let that happen. Okay. Matt would never play second fiddle to Jeff in that way. He's always thought he was – he's always thought he was the underrated one and the better one, and I I just think that – He's a little delusional that way. My problem also is that with all these guys who go to AEW, when WWE says, like, we think that you should take a a less active role in ring, and they go, I got a lot left in the tank, they go to AEW, and they become a parody of themselves, and they become a joke of themselves, and they're not putting on the matches they used to put on, with the exception of Christian, who's been doing good, but he's not important over there at all. Uh, He was also, he also was offered a contract by WWE, but not fast enough. Uh, when he made his return to, at Rumble, Tony Khan, in just a couple days, offered him a major contract, and he took it before WWE had a chance. But the conversation was going to happen. Uh, but I'm saying when WWEs are telling these guys, like, we don't think you need to wrestle like this anymore, and the guys are like, I think I do. They go to AEW, and then you go, yeah, I don't know if they should, to be honest. I, there's a lot of, I, you know, not to go down the AEW rabbit hole, but, like, Christian and specifically – I've read and seen and heard like the WWE was not good to him. Like they were kind of downright nasty to him. And, uh, you know, because they didn't like his look or whatever, but I mean, he was a damn good wrestler. And, and, uh, I don't know, he, he made millions of dollars and was a world he, champion several times. Hall of Fame? I thought him and Edge were both in the Hall of Fame. I thought he Edge was too. Was, yeah. I think, I oh. think, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand. I so, yeah, Christian. Yeah, he's in the Hall of Fame. Christian. Yeah, they're both... Christian's, in the Hall... Christian's in the Hall of Fame. No, I don't think Christian is actually. Well, Edge is. Christian's Edge not. Is. No, I don't think I don't think Christian is. I think How Edge is Christian is. not? I thought he was. Let me look it up right here. Yeah, Christian. I thought he was too. Now we know yeah, he is. Huh? Yes, I don't think he is. I think him. I don't. I think it's just Edge. Hey, while you're looking that up, what about that fan that like attacks <laughs> Seth Rollins? Oh man! Whoa! And then there was a, was there more to that story? I I heard like one of the wrestlers put out, "Hey, don't follow. This is not me. If this is not a check mark, I am. There are people that are posing as me and catfishing people, and yeah, he, like robbing he people. For, he fell for a catfish, and I don't get. Was that what it was? Yeah, fan? he fell for a catfish that was using Seth Rollins as his as his profile and apparently he like gave him a bunch of money and i'm like first off why do you think that a wwe superstar is gonna no wonder that's why that guy was pissed he thought rollins stole a bunch of fucking money from us oh man you know what when i first saw it i'll be honest with you i thought it was somebody that was developmentally disabled and i was like oh it's just somebody that's not you know and they don't they can't help themselves and and uh he thinks it's real or whatever. And I was like, no big, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, well, his so, response video, I thought was like, that's when I thought there was something wrong up there. A fan tackled a WWE as he left the ring and an unscripted and shocking attack triggered by a catfishing scam. Yep. Oh my God. Is there yep. more to that? No. Like that's all not I know. Really. Oh, oh, here we go. WWE wrestler. <laughs> Seth Rollins was tackled to the ground by a fan in an unscripted and shocking attack that left the fighter terrified. Elijah Spencer, 24, jumped the metal barricade and tackled Rollins as he left the ring during the live broadcast of WWE Monday Night Raw at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. The attacker and Rollins tussled on the ground until security and WWE officials broke up the fracas. And there was a lot of them, too, right? Like, real quick. Yeah. The New York Police Department spokesman told ESPN that Spencer was subsequently arrested and charged with attempted assault and attempted violation of arts and cultural affairs. 
WWE in a statement, W takes the safety of his performers very seriously. The individual who attacks Seth Rollins has been turned over to the NYPD and will prosecute it to the full extent of law. I'm wondering if the WWE doesn't change their stance on this because um, of the, you know, on Tuesday, Rollins told TMZ that he was shocked by the incident, but fortunately he wasn't injured in the other than some wrestle uh, swelling of the lip. It's terrifying, brother, he said. It happened very quickly. I was mostly just re reacting and hoping that our security would come and do their job, which they did very quickly. And it did. I felt like they were good. I don't think Rollins has any anything to complain about. And then was just trying to detach and move on. Hope that everybody is okay. He did an awesome job, by the way. I, I, Seth Rollins, if you didn't like him, I thought he kept his... Like, he, he, he didn't even let the people know it wasn't part of the act. And I know everybody there with all of me, they're like, that eh, shit was not part of it. So there's more. I could read more, but uh, um, I, it doesn't talk about the fans catfishing. Yeah, former, uh, former, former WWE wrestler uh, Chavo Guerrero said something about, he was like, remember when the wrestlers were tough back then? And I was like, okay, I get where he's coming from with this whole thing but we're in an age where you can't do that kind of stuff like come on well also if you have a, a perceived trained fighter beat the shit out of a fan there's going to be a lawsuit and do you want your lawsuit with your top guys uh i heard it even no. speculated that over the the ifbs because the referees got involved so fast that it was the referees before the security that it Rollins could easily have could been get Rollins out of there because if we're going to have a lawsuit, it needs to be against a referee and not a fucking top guy. Yeah, Rollins couldn't have done anything to that fan. That's how quick the refs were on. Yeah. The yes. refs were in there. I mean, the, to get Seth off of the guy, the not the guy also security. So like, I felt like the refs are part of the security, right? Like some of those dudes are probably like ex military, like all it was like, refs, it was refs agents and, security yeah but yeah. i mean it was so quick Rollins. i mean rollins could have done nothing he was blindsided by that guy before he knew what would i think he i think initially he wasn't sure it wasn't part of it anyway because you know you you, you know i'm sure that they surprised the wrestlers with like so like who's coming out because they want authentic mm -hmm. things i'm i imagine they don't tell them what's going on all the time right so like that could have been like a a part of the show and I think once once all the security was on top of Rollins before he could do anything anyway. So I would never call the man not a man because he didn't hit somebody. But one, he didn't have an opportunity to. He couldn't. I mean, he could, he could be the fastest puncher in the world. He would. I actually look like Rollins got some licks in on the guy. Like he got he got the yeah he had that guillotine on him real good. Yeah, but he like had the guy in that guillotine. Yeah. So like but, I don't know what. Uh, Chavo Guerrero could shove it up his ass. I don't think anybody could have done exactly. better than what Rollins did. Yeah. Uh, I think Rollins handled that amazingly because you know what he also did? He was in his spot when the came back from replay. He was where he needed yep. to be on the top of the ramp to talk shit to Finn Balor. If you watched it just from a production standpoint, you wouldn't know that something went wrong there. He got yeah. in and got out and got back to where he was supposed to be and handled it like a fucking pro. He was oh, yeah. awesome. I got it, nothing but that was incredible things to say about Rollins. Like that was, he handled that so well. I was like, gee. Yeah, God. and back in character. And that kind of happened on the yes. broadcast too. They like, obviously they're going to try to, it's like a fan, naked fan run out or whatever on the field. They, they won't yeah. show it anymore because they don't want to give it any attention. And so I know the WWE's had that policy for a long time. I'm sure there's a fan interactions we miss all the time. Right. So, um, I mean, you know just watching edge come out was kind of cool he's like casually you know talking with people and stuff but yeah oh and then I, when seth comes out at the end and he goes like this to the sides like yeah. anyone else coming out <laughs> dude so he did a good job man like if you if you are giving him a hard time you do not like anything or anybody like that was a difficult situation you have no idea i mean that guy could have a freaking knife you know like exactly it, you know, what a scare. I mean, I, I really I think, felt with I the think, amount of stuff we saw online, I really felt like how insecure are you as a human or man or fighter to where you saw that and your thought is, well, I would have handled it better. 
fuck well, off. I never thought that. I was like, good God. I go, he handled it great. Uh, I yeah, know, but I, all these guys were speaking up being like, well, I would have, oh, they don't ever jump me. And it was kind of like, okay, like were, how were, much, like how yeah, insecure are you that. that you have to make this conversation about if you're tougher than Seth Rollins in that instant? I even tweeted something like, honestly, how do I even know you're a tough guy if you didn't tweet about how you're tougher than Seth Rollins? Like, the fuck? Like, you come off like such a fucking pansy when you see that, and your whole thought process <laughs> isn't, did Seth handle himself all right, or I'm glad everyone's okay. Your thought yeah. process is, I should tell the world that I would have been beat the shit out of that guy. Uh, oh, no, you wouldn't, um, first off. <laughs> what's Charlotte Flair's opinion on it? I wonder what she said on the subject <laughs> oh my gonna, god yeah <laughs> i want to know what charlotte guy. thinks uh, uh on that one yeah dude uh the, he handled it fine and he in did. fact you job. know like it's probably a good thing he got a glimpse of the guy uh because if the guy had blindsided him um i mean oh, he yeah. really seriously could have hurt him so yeah. i'm glad rollins is okay and uh i was actually i you know, like when that shit went down, I was like, oh, my God. Like I saw it on a Bleacher Report and um, I was like, I, I I don't think we'll see Rollins again for the rest of the night. And then when he came out, I was like, oh, he's OK. So like, he's a they, fucking they did it, when, they, when it happened live, they uh, they cut quick. Like it was like you saw him hit him and then they cut it. Yeah. And they went to Balor. They went to Balor selling in the yeah, ring. I, and, I, yeah. And I then got... as soon as they came back, he was up on the ramp like talking trash to Balor and I'm like you guys did good yeah yeah no I mean I yeah like uh, so obviously it, when you're watching it Justin it's real time right or for the most part yeah. it's real time yeah it's real time. when I'm watching it it's like four hours after you've watched it oh, so wow. like I already like I have to stay off my phone or I won't like I will all know exactly what's happening and so I don't I don't want to know what's happening I don't I'm I don't want to be spoiled Mm-hmm. But I saw the video. When I watch AEW pay-per-views. If I, if I can't ever watch it the night of, I stay right off Twitter and I just wait until the next day and watch yeah, it. Yeah, the pay-per-views are not a problem because they come on the, it does, they come on when they when you're watching them. So it's like not a big deal. That's the one thing like we could all sync up on because it's all the same time. Uh, but for whatever reason, Raw and SmackDown, they won't, won't. Sh- I have to have like a VPN to watch it your time, yeah. which would be fine. I mean, I, I might be end up doing that anyway, but um, yeah. So like, so sometimes I'll be watching hockey or something and I'll see, oh, fan attack Seth Rollins. So I actually knew about the fan attacking him before I watched what else happened, but I stayed yeah. off, but I paid attention because I watched the part, the fan thing didn't spoil anything for me for the show. So anyway, that was a crazy. I was so. Uh, so. In the chat, real quick, Jeremy in time says Edge is in the Hall of Fame. Christian inducted him, but isn't the Hall of Fame himself just yet. And I also saw that Christian inducted Christian and Edge inducted the Dudley Boys. So I think that's why I thought because I've seen Christian at the Hall of Fame yeah. before. It's because he's inducting everybody else. Uh, and Grim Reaper says, "I love how Becky was right there, ready to pounce, backing up her man." Yeah, as the camera was kind of going around in the back, there yeah. a few shots you could see her standing right behind everything, like making yeah. sure everything was cool, but. Yeah, well, I mean, st- I would be freaking scared. Like, you know, that's, you know, that was a crazy, that's crazy. Like, oh, yeah, insane. We talk about fan interaction on every show, and like, most of that shit is from the 70s and 80s and stuff. So, like, it's so insane nowadays. Again, that's why I thought the guy was mentally deficient. I actually was correct because somebody tricked him to thinking that he was a WWE superstar to give money. First of all, what did he give money for? backstage oh passing. and it was uh through like the gift cards thing oh get me like an itunes gift card and yeah. need 500 bucks dude like what are they teaching kids in school now like i don't like i get spams with so much stuff now it's like the the, the legit stuff looks authentic like like i just literally will not do anything anymore like sign up for anything like that and, well he's just through he he he, he must have got like like in contact with him beforehand because he apparently there's messages from like hangouts from like google hangouts and stuff yeah. so it's like he's from there so well i hope this hold kid him. elijah spencer doesn't get in any real trouble because you know he's a victim too like he got yeah. victimized not by seth rollins or the wwe but like the wwe getting out like that that's what I was saying. I think the WWE got out in front of this a little bit, but one of the, I don't remember who the female superstar that was like, Hey, if 
this is the only thing I have. I don't have anything else. Like if you, somebody's asking you on this site or blah, 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 that is not me to oh, all yeah. my fans. Like they're putting out PSAs. Like don't get catfished by, you know, some dude that was going to steal money. I mean, it's, you know, it's like, to me, anything, any, anytime you're dealing with internet crime too, it's international, right? Because they obviously can be done anywhere. So you get in the FBI and stuff involved. So I, I feel like it's a real, that kid, that kid was a victim and he was victimized. And if he was victimized for anything over 500 bucks, it's considered a felony. So hmm. uh, I mean, that's a little light, you know, but still, I mean, it's, yeah, you know, but still like, I, you know, I feel for the people involved there, you know, I, I hope yeah, this I was kind of staying it. offline about it a lot too, because when it was all coming down and people were just trashing him, my first thought was if this guy has any kind of mental issues, yeah. that's going to come up and it's going to look real bad when you keep saying, yeah, beat the shit out of this guy with mental yeah, illness. He's developmentally disabled. I thought he was yeah. like, like he could have been mentally retarded or something. Uh, or, uh, you know, he could have had down syndrome or something like that. And then if that happens, you, you know, everybody that's like, I would have beat his ass. Oh yeah. You'd have beat up a handicapped kid. Like, yeah, you know, you exactly. can hit a lady before you could, <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> beat up a handicapped kid. Like, uh, the guy's response was the only thing to me that made me think that there was something up there. Not right. Well, obviously there the, was something. The fan right footage of him walking out. I felt like the look of him on his way out. I was like, I don't know. Something about him looks like there might be something off. And so I didn't, I didn't make any comments because I thought, you know, yeah, stay on that side. But at the same time, we're in a world now where kayfabe is so diluted that nobody doesn't think that there's a, a difference here. And like you said, his belief was that he was talking to the real Kobe Lopez and not Seth Rollins. And he's, he got shorted out all this money. So he is was going to attack the guy. His real name, Kobe Lopez. Exactly. And yeah. that's what he said, even. He kept referring to him as all like, Kobe Lopez owes me money. He said that he got booked there by Goldberg and Vince McMahon. And I was like, okay. So yeah, something's he not right. It, he, he pulled the whole, he did it for The Rock. He did it for Rikishi. He did it for yeah. his bloodline. And I'm like, there's something up there wrong. Yeah, there's well, something yeah. going on here. Yeah, but yeah, like, but like, if he was victimized, if he was, so he's definitely probably not all there mentally. And that's what I'm saying is that we're in a world now where if someone's heated enough to jump over, it's because there's a mass confusion somewhere or something yeah. not clicking right. Because we all yeah. know, generally speaking, and we're not in the world where kayfabe is so blurred that people were jumping the, the, the yeah. barrier to stab motherfuckers. If they're doing it now, something's not right. And so I thought it was really weird that people were like, I'm going to beat the shit out of him. And I was like... Should we take a step back and realize that there could be something going on here a little bit more? How many rednecks went to the Stone Cold field feud though with Vince being like, I'm gonna shoot Vince. Like I'm yeah. gonna shoot I'm, I'm gonna shoot real. Vince and end all of Stone Cold's problems. Yeah. yeah you think, like it's gonna happen. And I guarantee you, like, they had metal detectors back then and just would catch these Yahoos at the door. Like, cause I, I'm, there's still always like, there's all kinds of videos of the top end. Anyway, I knew we had to talk about it, but, oh, but yeah. we were, yeah. but we were talking a little bit about Christian and the hall of fame and stuff like that. And then, uh, I, and I, I got to give props to Becky Lynch too. Cause we talked a little bit. Of, uh, she called the fans out about the women's match. I think yeah. you and I talked about this during. Oh, I loved that. Thing. I was a big fan of that. I was like, yeah, you know, if you want better matches, then be better. There's, there's a responsibility to the fandom too. Like I, you're there in person and you get to see and you're doing this is awesome chant because you're seeing something badass. I love it. I appreciate it. It helps me as a viewer at home, really focus in on what you're seeing because if you're seeing it in the ring, if they're seeing it in the arena, then, you know, like we're obviously should be able to see it on TV, yes. but you know, your distraction and this and that, and you're this and your wife's asking you that and blah, blah, blah. And you had too much ash aid and you're blah, blah, blah. And so, but like, I, you know, for me, I, you know, I really like a superstar that's really respected being like, Hey, be, you know, come out. There's some fan etiquette. You, you know, we don't, you don't have to be like me or be fans of me, but like, 
you know, if you're seeing something great, don't be inflating beach balls and doing the fucking wave and shit. The wave should have been banned a long fucking time ago. You should do jail time for initiating a wave. Yeah. So, uh, you know, watch what you ha- came to see. You know, like if it's, you know, so, uh, it's invented by soccer fans that, you know, at the halftime, because they, you know, were cold. That's how they move, you know? So like, I yeah. just, for me, it's like, okay, you know, like it's not, there's nothing i don't do the wave like if somebody starts the wave at an arena <laughs> we went to msg yep not doing it i make fun of every girl wearing a sydney crosby jersey though so <laughs> um, but yeah 100 percent. if you're going to be the type of person to do a wave and chant cm punk during a women's match with 10 top stars in the women's division so yeah. it's not like nobody it's not like exactly. you're watching a preliminary match you are watching 10 of their top stars and you're participating in those things, then I don't want to see you ever fucking tweet about how long the uh, Queen's crown matches were. Like, fuck yeah, off. Yeah. Go I ahead, agree. Justin. Yeah, I was about to say, the Queen's crown thing was a prime example. If everybody got PO'd about that, I don't know why in the world they had to be, like, jerks for the 10-woman uh, for the five, for the five ten woman tag match. Like, yeah. that just... Yeah, I mean, and the women are, it's still, you know, like, you, there's not a quick, there's not equality in the ring. The men get way more time than the women. Like, yeah. even the big women matches are still a third less the time of the men's match. You, mm-hmm. you know, like. Well, if you're talking strictly numbers, they also have two, they have like three times the amount of men on the roster, which is a whole other thing. Well, I, and I'm just, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing either. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to start a feminist movement for wrestling or anything like that. I'm just saying it's, look at the numbers. It's, it's not close. Very rarely do the top women's match match the top men's match. And I would argue, I would rather watch the top women's over the top men's because the top men's stuff is kind of played out and it's, you know, mm-hmm. and the women's stuff is what sort of intrigues me. Uh, I think they're doing a better job uh, in the back of the house, their promos, uh, how they're trying to build the things. Again, we talked about the Charlotte Enigma. That's just this big giant piece of shit that we have to deal with. And it's, you know, as fans, it's fucking blows, but everything outside of her little fucking black hole of sucking all the joy out of the women's division is all great. You know, like Becky, what they, I mean, she's getting people over. I mean, I was going to tell you like Bianca, I mean, she's a, she's a poor pulse player. Like she's just a, a part-time, you know, like she's not even part of the story right now and she doesn't need to be. And she didn't make, I mean, you could like, I was like, this is how you act in the ring. Look at what she's doing. Now she's trying to help get live over. Like yeah. she's not even, it's not even about her. Like, yeah. and it was it, like that feud was just ended. Nope. Moving on truck. Keep on trucking. Like, I love it. It shows to me what kind of person Bianca is. Yeah. Which I think we all knew she was awesome. And you'll root for her again because, you know, but let's have Liv have a run. I do think too, like I've been saying, the WWE has been putting a lot of faith in having, uh, I think people need good st- news, right? We got Omicron and COVID and blah, 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 and global pandemic and supply shortage and supply chain issues and Republican versus Democrat and, blah 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 so like it's like i would just say like it wouldn't hurt to have a baby face that's getting over all the time you know we're having somebody that's a happy you know corbin without all the douchebaggery you know somebody that's (laughs) oh i got look i got this and i'm kicking butt you know new day is somewhat that right and and Big E, uh if he's with new day i think you could play that up more but like I would not be that um, reluctant to shy away from that storyline if I was in charge of things. So I, I, well, just, I think also I'm Bianca curious. being on top the way that she was and going all the way to the main event of WrestleMania, she's just ready to go. She's ready. You know what I mean? Like right. at any given time you put her back in the title picture and you're ready. Like they're building right now a division of believable champions at any given time. There's no more specifically no, like, I remember I was talking about the the mid card of SmackDown being incredibly impressive because the mid card of SmackDown had Seth Rollins and Cesaro and Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. And you're like, your mid card is main event talent. And that's not to say 
that they're not being treated well. It's saying that you're, you've built such a strong roster that even the ones that are not in the main picture could believably get there at any given moment. And they're doing that with the women now. And I love it. Yeah. They're building. I agree 100%. And that's, I mean, it's again, like I said, it is about being a fandom of that. And I'll just say, you know, I bring it up because I would rather just see more of the women's matches. Let them go a little bit longer. I'm not saying like, it doesn't mean that you have to give them equal time or whatever. I'm just saying like the product I'm seeing on the, in the ring in the squared circle is really good. It's really high level and they work really well together. It's super believable outside of the, you know, the Charlotte versus Becky thing. Everything else has just been creme de la creme. As far as I, as far as I'm concerned, the matches I go away, I mean, I'm not saying nine times out of 10, but usually when I'm like, Oh, what matches were my favorites? Oh, the women's like, it's almost always the women's stuff, you know? So like, oh, before, yeah. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. I think we all agree. I mean, we've even talked about how the women is what dragged you back into it all. Uh, I think before we run out of time though, uh, not that we're like out of time, out of time, but I know we don't want to be here forever. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the edge and Miz promo that a lot of people were talking about. Oh yeah. Uh, I'll start with Justin. What did you think about this and the uh, uh, comments that edge made? Some people are trying to speculate that the only reason this promo was even booked to happen was as a reaction to how well received the MJF and CM Punk promo. That was a 20 minute promo on AEW. Uh, how well received that was. So therefore this was in, in retort to that. Uh, tell me what you think about all that. I thought I thought it was just as great as the Punk MJF hmm. promo. Again, Edge bringing up John Morrison getting released. Kind of didn't feel like it was needed. I don't know what it is about Miz to me. Like I'm so 50-50 on Miz, but Miz feels like his promos are the same freaking thing every time. It's, mm-hmm. I've been here forever. Look at me, I'm a Hollywood A-lister. My wife's hot. I did Dancing with the Stars. I did this. Where's my respect? And it's always the same thing with Miz. Like, I feel like we never get a new promo from Miz. Do you notice he makes those goofy, like, frog face- faces all the time? When he thinks he says something yes. really smart or good, he's like... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck are you doing when he gets it's all smug Nicholson. it's yeah. he's channeling his inner nicholson uh joker from the batman yeah <laughs> freak bat wait till they get a load of me no. uh so people were pissed off that the edge made mention that miz left his partner high and dry and he got released and also were mad that edge said you're living in uh people's minds rent free when they're using your name for a cheap reaction on other shows uh i i didn't i I didn't hate it go ahead uh yeah i didn't mind their back and forth i i thought it was fine i i didn't think anything was out of bounds i did it was a little sad you know the whole john morrison thing is kind of sad anyway right his yeah, wife yeah. is on the roster too or whatever and she got released a few so you know like just kind of how they buried his character at the end i felt bad for him because miz was doing the thing and i do i do think miz kind of leaving and killed that character i think I mean, morrison might be still on the roster if miz was there and he wasn't doing dancing with the stars it um, almost felt like they could have done that feud earlier before miz yeah. left they could have had morrison beat him to send him off to dancing with the stars instead of yeah him. Instead yeah. of them having it happen just to immediately take him off TV. Yeah, like, yeah, that's what was kind of bum. I feel like that that character, for the short time I was back, seemed like it had enough gravitas to kind of let it die a, a really gentleman's type death. It didn't mm-hmm. do it. I Yeah, they didn't do it for me there. I, I I didn't have any problem with the promo they cut, though. I mean, like, I, 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 I had more to say about the Beckys, so, like... Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, I didn't did have any just... issues with it myself. And I also didn't have any issue with... Because I thought it was kind of funny. Like, Because everyone was talking about how their whole thing was... Uh, AEW uses the history of WWE better than, a- than WWE does. And that's why they bring it up all the time. But I heard a counter-argument that by placing WWE squarely in position to be in all of your promos, in every important promo, 
that you are, in a sense, referring to WWE as almost godlike, that they are the end-all, be-all. And by saying that MJF was a less famous version of The Miz that was doesn't make... I, I liked that. I thought it was hilarious. Sure, but it doesn't make anyone in that feud seem more important. And then when The Miz say? shows up on Raw, you go, oh, here's The Miz, the one that CM Punk was referring to in a better light than MJF. You know what I mean? Like, I think it does It does light, complicate. Yeah. He said, you're The Miz light or something. It was good. I actually thought it was good. He said, you're Again. a less famous version of The Miz, yeah, which, yeah, is, yeah. which is fine, but I don't oh, think that it makes that The Miz cool? look like less than. You know what I mean? You're not you shitting on the Miz either. there. Well, yeah, I don't think he was shitting on the Miz either. He was shitting on MJF. But did you also think that that was accurate? I thought it was very accurate. Uh, I think, no, I think that, think that I think MJF there's a lot of things. Kind of a rip off of the Miz. He feels like he's a little bit of a rip off of the Miz. I've always referred to MJF as another as a, he reminds me so much of Miz. <laughs> okay. If Miz had if Miz had his attitude. I feel like I'd probably like Miz a little bit more. So MJF but you're not meant to like that. either of them, I thought, right? The idea is, I don't think that MJF is Miz light at all because I think MJF is absolutely afraid of heat and I think that Miz isn't. I think that the entire gimmick of MJF being, quote, not a gimmick is such a gimmick that it gives it all away. And I think that I think that MJF doesn't have nearly the the career history to even begin that that narrative you know what i mean i think that the things that miz has accomplished is it an insult to the miz then what cm punk said or should the miz be like yeah uh yeah you know who who, who's mjf i thought didn't the miz respond and he was like i don't know who mjf is or whatever i thought he was yeah sure but if i could finish the sentence so the idea is that that by saying MJF is a less famous version of The Miz, you're already saying that the other show is more popular and that Miz is more famous. So you're already putting WWE in an elevated light, not in a, a secondary light. And I, they typically try to take the route of we're better than WWE. But here's one where they actually said it in such a way that it didn't make WWE sound bad, which I thought was kind of interesting. Uh, I, didn't, I wasn't like shitting all over either of those promos. But I did think that when Edge said they're using your name to get a cheap reaction, that was identifiably saying it's less than. Because using your name to that fan base was a cheap pop. It was no different than saying, I don't like the hillbillies here. Which, for the record, is the problem I have with MJF, is he doesn't have any... He doesn't have any actual heat-getting comments. He has cheap reaction comments. He'll say, I slept with your mother, or there's nothing but hillbillies here. I'm smarter than everyone here. You're all poor. He uses the old tactics from the 60s and 70s, but not even as clever as like Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman brought out a bar of soap and a roll of toilet paper and said, I'll teach you guys in this area how to use them because there's no way you guys know how to use this stuff. You know what I mean? Like he's not even on that level. So by saying that you are getting a cheap reaction on another show was kind of like, they don't have much going for them anyways. But I thought it was cool. I thought it was neat. I liked the idea that they're recognizing each other, but I also like the idea that on IWC, they said AEW doing it. Awesome. WWE doing it. This is stupid. And I was like, that's funny. Yeah, that was really dumb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think there's, you know, for, in the, if you get into the comments, I see a lot of pro AEW over WWE, but like, I feel like again, is. perspective is, you know, I, I, you know, AEW is the new hot girl in town, right? Like everybody yeah. wants to date her, you know, nobody knows anything about her except for, you know, that she reminds you of a lot of your favorite because you know, this, that, or the other, did you see the, uh, taker interview with Kevin Hart cold as balls? I didn't see the whole thing. I saw the commercial for it. It looks fun. Okay. It's on YouTube, but okay. anyway, they, he, I wanted to bring this up. Uh, kind of as a crescendo to the show uh, was the, I think Kevin asked him name your uh, Mount Rushmore of wrestling. I, I thought we could do it and I will give you his without going into the whole detail. He said, Andre, the giant. Mm-hmm. Okay. Stone Cold Steve Austin, the rock and Shawn Michaels. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I've, I, you know, I didn't write mine down. 
I figured you, I'd ask you guys what your four are. Do okay, before with... we do that, I'm going to hit the chat and then we'll do that. Just so we can uh, be respectful to the chat. And if you guys want to join the chat, twitch.tv slash dressing on the rocks is the easiest, quickest way to go live and be a part of the show, derail the show. One of our favorite derailers, Grim Reaper, said, Miz is so much better with Maurice. They are a great package. I will say, as much as I don't like the Miz in general and don't like his segments, when he came out with Maurice, I felt like something was fresher here. And I felt like this promo here did not annoy me. It wasn't as bad as Miz TV stuff. All the stuff with him and John Morrison, I just hated every time. I wouldn't even watch it. This one, the two of them together with Edge, I was like, this does feel better, more visceral. This feels, I did enjoy it a lot more. So I agree with that. That them as a package seemed to make yeah, a difference to me. To think, to think just because I think Miz, that Miz is repetitive doesn't mean I didn't like it. I just think Miz is just very repetitive with his promos a lot. I agree. I don't think he said anything new. And I didn't like his frog face. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so, and then I'll Green say this, though. Yeah. As someone coming back, I actually, the Miz is one of those guys that you've seen, and I've seen him a lot in other things. Yes. Because he's out there. So yes. I didn't, I didn't even, I've never even seen him wrestle because I, just coming back. So, uh, so my break, Justin, is really like 2003 ish. I stopped following really till now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, and then I wasn't like a devout follower, even in the, you know, but I watched it because of Stone Cold and stuff. So anyway. And also uh, if I'm AEW, I'm not going to say that MJF is the cheap version of, or a less famous Miz. I'm going to say he's the, 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 the Miz that could have been, I'm going to say that he's a faster rising star than the Miz ever was. Miz struggled for years and years and years to get respect. It took Miz 10, 15 years of not getting injured and being, having uh, record breaking title reigns for anyone to acknowledge him where I would say MJF, you're a fast rising Miz and you're better than he was. And I still don't respect you as, uh, half as much as I respected him. You know what I mean? Like, talk a little bit of shit on there, but make Miz, MJF sound like a star. You just said, MJF, you're, you're a fucking well, podunk version. I, it was probably a little bit of laziness on Punk's thing to even <laughs> bring it up, but I do, like I said, I don't you think that... I haven't watched really any AEW, but I've seen this, that, or the other. And to me, what I've garnered is... MJF does seem like he's kind of like the Miz. It's that whole cut from the uh, Million Dollar Man mm -hmm. cloth, man, that they sure. all have to, should have to pay that dude fucking tithe. That's true. Using his shit that's, fit, you know, 35 years, 40 years old. I, you know, But you so could like, build him on the way of the teardown, and this was just a flat teardown. You could say, you you're a better like Miz, and I don't even like you half as much as I liked him, you know? <laughs> yeah, I got it. <laughs> I got it. I, I think Punk took the easy way out probably I agree. there. But I and then Grim Reaper fun. and then Grim Reaper says AEW wrestlers mention WWE characters' names. WWE wrestlers never mention AEW wrestler names. And I think it's because AEW is happy to take the fines. And well, I think they're happy to poke the bear. Names, but he oh, yeah. freaking referenced a lot of them, which is like, but Punk freely dropped names, but MJF didn't drop names. And I went, really? MJF, the guy who's supposed to be Mr. Shock promo. And he freaking didn't. He he won't drop names, but Punk will. I'm like, yeah. come on. Yeah, I agree. But let's go ahead and let's do the uh, Mount Rushmore thing of sports beard. Sports beard. So you don't have one ready to go. You want to start with Justin? You want me to give you uh, Mark Calloway's again one more time? No, I know. I know what his was. It was Stone Cold Rock, HBK, and Andre. Okay. Uh, Justin, who's who'd be your four top four Mount Rushmore? Well. My first one would be the guy who was on the Kevin Hart thing is the Undertaker. Yeah, he's a hard always, one to keep off. Yeah, he's he's off. he's always been. I've I've never been a person who will do, like make a list of greatest of all time and all this other stuff like that. But I'll always say that the greatest of all time to me is always going to be the Undertaker, no matter what. I feel like he's one of those names where you almost have to caveat, let's talk about the four greatest of all time, but let's not talk about The Undertaker because it's just unfair. Because I, I agree. There's no way you cannot talk about Undertaker being probably the single greatest character and story arc of the entire industry. So Taker is, uh, he's uh, the Crazy Horse Memorial that's right by Mount Rushmore? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he would have his own, yeah. Yeah, he, I put him in my Mount Rushmore. I, Justin, I don't think you finished. You said Taker was your first. Yeah, it would be, it'd be Taker, 
more than likely Shawn Michaels because okay. I'm gonna go recent. I'm gonna go recent, and I'm probably gonna say John Cena. Mm-hmm. That's very fair. And one that I think we don't, a lot of people probably wouldn't put on there, is I'm gonna put AJ Styles on there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, he okay. deserves to be in the conversation for greatest ever. Uh, I think that AJ the fact Styles. he's not brought up a lot is is in is frustrating at the very least. Um, I would say that if I'm doing my Mount Rushmore of my all times, that it would be a little bit different because I could I would entertain the argument of why other people would have a different four. But I'll tell you, if I'm putting my top four, I'm not even gonna like HBK doesn't even get a breath. Like he's not even. Yeah, he's uh, not. there's. There's four other wrestlers I would watch every match of theirs before I watch one singular HBK match uh, easily. Um, let me see Baker real quick. Graham Reaper. Uh, Graham Reaper's got his Mount Rushmore. He says That's Austin, her. Undertaker, Hogan, and Cena because they are all generational. Right. Yep. That's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, I will say that I'll put Undertaker on my Crazy Horse Memorial because I think it's a little unfair. But I would say that my Mount Rushmore would have Bret Hart, it would have Mick Foley. Yeah. Uh, it yeah. would probably have Cena, because I do think that Cena, it's Cena's fifteen years, yeah, of being the top guy, yeah, should not be scoffed at. Because I mean, even though you have uh, Stone Cold and The Rock, both of their runs were six, seven years. They didn't have half the run that Cena had. Oh, they didn't. Stone Cold was like five. Exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, but I probably would put Austin on there as well because I do think that the rewatchability of a lot of his matches and the intensity of those matches, I think, is there. He's he's on there. So. Yeah, but I would say that AJ Styles should be in that conversation. Like, if I'm putting on best Cena matches of all time, two of those matches have AJ in them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, I mean, I didn't, you know, I know that, I hear a lot of reverence with AJ Styles is mentioned. And so like, and I hear from people that I'm like, Oh, I respect that person's opinion. Both of yours. Uh, I respect your opinion. And, and to hear the reverence that's talked about with AJ Styles, it is like, Oh, this guy's an OG man. Like I, I haven't really seen much from him. I mean, I, he's good with the Omos thing is really good. Um, and then I, I was going to say, I think Taker said something about Omos or, Somebody said something really like Taker. Like Andre, you, what? Taker what? Like yeah, Taker Omos. said that Omos is the closest thing we've had to Andre since Andre. And he was like, "Wow!" That, like I was blown away by how much he that really like. You just see that like that really made that dude's day, and he probably is really feeling a lot better about what he's doing. And it really made me actually appreciate a lot more of what he was doing because I was actually a, a lot critical of that that whole gag because I'm like, "Oh, this is." It's also another billion dollar man, Ted DiBiase thing, right? He has Virgil or, mm. you know, you know, other things. But yeah. Here, write I, this down real quick. Two matches yeah. that you should see is the John Cena AJ Styles SummerSlam match and the John Cena AJ Styles Royal Rumble match. That's right. What years? Cena. Uh, Cena Styles, what was it? Royal Rumble and, and what? Rumble Summer was 2017. Time. The SummerSlam had to be 2016, right? It was before then. Yeah. Yeah. 2016 and what year was the royal rumble 2017 yeah watch those two matches because those are the two two of the greatest matches cena was ever in uh yeah but let's hear uh i put aj AJ up there because i've i've followed him since his tna days so i love it i love it i've seen him before and so i love it that's what that's the great thing it's your perspective like i so i did mine I, I didn't do the Crazy Horse Memorial. Because honestly, yeah. if I was picking the Crazy Horse Memorial, Stone Cold would be my Crazy mm. Horse Memorial. That's okay. fair. I picked my four. Uh, but I picked Stone Cold. I, I picked Orton originally, but mm. I think that could be changed to John Cena. You know, but like, I just feel like with the longevity, good. Uh, yeah, Taker, and, good and then for me, The Rock has to be. You know, the Rock is transcends. There's not... If you go greatest of all time, it, when you start talking about goat, like in the wrestling thing, to me, like, and 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 Ref Marsh has said this so much lately when we've watched that stuff, and like we're thinking that, um, 
And I read also that like Reigns is going to write out his stuff and he's not going to wrestle after this contract is up, which is the end of the year of next year. His contract is up at the end of 2022. So we're literally, we only have like a year left of him being in the WWE. So, uh, you know, you, you keep saying he, he talks about how he's the greatest of all time and stuff, but really it's probably is the rock, right? And reality and popularity and everything. Who doesn't know? I mean, since Hulk Hogan, what wrestler? I mean, Stone Cold is there. Stone Cold is there for sure. Stone Cold could have been, had he wanted it, I think, to be a, as big a star as the rock. I, sure. I What's your favorite rock match? Well, it's got to be a McFoley one, right? Those Maybe. were the best. I mean, those were the best. I mean, they're, they're, the, obviously the one with him and Stone Cold is really good. They had three um, at Mania alone. But, uh, Justin, what was if you had to pick a favorite rock match, what are you going with? Who, with me? Hogan. No, no, Justin. The one with Hogan. Hogan? Yep. Okay. I'm just wondering. My my The reason that I – because uh, Grim Reaper is in here. says, are we talking uh, all wrestling Rushmore or WWE Rushmore? And, Grim, I challenge you to tell me that there's a difference. Uh, and then he says, if it's all wrestling, Ric Flair can get thrown in there too. But uh, to be honest, I don't think I'd still put Ric Flair in there. Not, nothing to do with what he's done lately. He just isn't one of my favorite to rewatch. Uh, and that's not a knock on him. Uh, and then that's he the says, thing I like about the Mount Rushmore talk is because yeah. it's oh, everyone always has a different one. And that's the thing yeah. I like about it. Yeah. yeah I mean, and I think that it's all fair. I have uh, the says, rock. Yeah. And Grooming says, AJ Styles can be considered for all wrestling Mount Rushmore, but not WWE. Uh, and I also disagree with you there, too, because I think AJ Styles' best uh, uh, career moments have all been in WWE. I think he had a great run leading up to it, but I think he was on a different level when he got there and what he's been doing since then. But the only issue I have with The Rock, why he wouldn't make it on my Mount Rushmore, is because he had such a high-level charisma that he kind of went out there with a cheat code. And he did a lot of things that if that I don't think were beneficial, I don't think looked very good he wasn't that great of a wrestler in a, in general, but he had the charisma and the ability to control the crowd. And if that's all you need, then that's all you need. Right. But I think the people the have also sent him. People, you're saying in perspective, like the rock bottom and the people's elbow, anybody else does those without the charisma of it being the rock bottom and the people's elbow, obviously two simple moves to pull off in the ring too, like super yes. simple. Right. So like, you're like, well, there's not really a lot of it. Uh, it doesn't feel very. Uh, you don't get lost in it. You always creative. remember it's a great. Yeah. Like even yeah. the way that the rock sold stone cold stunners, he would like flip over twist yeah, yeah, around. He oversold the shit of them. Yeah, they, <laughs> he, he did. did. He oversold the shit of them. He did. He did. Um, so you'd watch I, it and you laugh, but you don't believe it. Like the, when you watch Bret Hart or Vincent Mann take a stone cold stunner, you go, Oh fuck. That moves devastating. He killed him. He killed yeah. him. He broke him in half. Yeah. But you watch the rock take a stone cold stunner and you just laugh and say, it's all goofy. None of it matters. Whatever. We're all just here to have a good time. Look at the first one on, look at the first one on Vince. He botched yeah. it, but he still sold it. Like he died. Yeah. You know what though? Isn't that a little bit of the Rock's character though? Like fucking with Stone Cold, because like Stone Cold was like legit serious. Like it's so funny that the oh, yeah. Rock did the Walking Tall movie because that was Stone Cold could have done the Walking Tall. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Stone Cold was was literally the personification of the Walking Tall guy. Without you know the hacksaw, Jim Duggan was that too, right? Or oh, yeah. Walking Tall was you know kind of a basis for that character, but. Um, 100%. Yeah. 100%. But I also don't think that it's wrong for anyone to throw him on there. That's just the only reason why I don't throw him on there. It's because when I rewatch his stuff, I go, this is goofy. And when I see people do stuff that's too much like The Rock, I'm all like, it doesn't work with you. You don't have that level of charisma. You can't get away with this shit. You know what I mean? Like, he, he was living life on a cheat code, which puts him on a different stratosphere as well. But why I don't have the same rewatchability for his matches that I can get lost in, like I do some of these other guys, you know? No. Would you change the taker as your crazy horse, put him on your uh, Mount Rushmore and make the rock the crazy horse? No, because okay. the undertaker personifies what it takes to be WWE or what wrestling really is. And the rock was just a fucking flash in the wind. He was this tornado that burst through and everyone said, what the fuck was that? And it changed things forever. 
but it wasn't the end all be all personification of a WWE superstar to me, other than the fact that his charisma was through the roof. You know, it's so funny to me. Honestly, The Rock looks better now than he did when oh, he yeah. wrestled. 100%. It's so ridiculous how much better shape he is now. Um, and I uh, understanding that a lot of that is the road and the life you have to live on the road. You're not eating, you know, as well or whatever. He can eat like a king now, and um, you know, rightfully so. I have a lot of respect for the man. Um, like I said, I'd vote for oh, yeah. him if he were for president. So uh, any day. Uh, uh, I agree with you. Um, I have to have him in my Mount Rushmore. And exactly what Justin said, I feel like it's so great to hear everybody else's perspective because obviously a lot of it is uh, if you if you're less if you're 30 or younger, you don't even know who the fuck Ric Flair is. I mean, you've seen him around and shit because he's been doing stuff into his 70s now. But and the woo is Ric Flair, right? Like like yeah. uh, like when I watched wrestling, it was still regional. Yeah. You know, the stuff that we would see was st still regional bef before Hulk Hogan and stuff was before WWE. Like, yeah. you know, so I, you know, For sure. I don't know, man. Like, I like hearing what everybody else's perspective is on who they think. Like, the AJ Styles thing, like, I liked it because it was different. It was something I, I, I was the one that had The Rock, you know, and, and you know, I said Randy Orton. You know, I, I do think Cena should be on there. It's like, it's so hard. If, if you ask yeah, yeah. me to take somebody off, I, 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 I couldn't. Yeah, I think I'd I, I have think to I have the switch. Rock, Stone Cold, and Undertaker on there for me, those three. And then sure. I, you, you could debate Orton, Cena, AJ Styles. I love yeah. that we all had something different. Uh, Justin, what were you going to say? Yeah, I think I would end up switching probably Shawn Michaels on there. I'd probably put Austin on there because it's it's Stone Cold. You can't really... He changed the business in a whole other way. See, the difference between yeah. the way The Rock changed the business and Stone Cold is Stone Cold changed the business in a reality-based fashion. People just believed in his character, where The Rock changed the business in a showmanship kind of a way, where you could just be so charismatic that people just didn't care if they believed anymore. And I think those are two distinct differences in how people watch wrestling nowadays, too. And I've always been more of the make me believe and less in the whole, yeah, but it's all just fun and games, which is fine. But I find myself more attached to the stuff where I go, I believe this, than stuff where I go, yeah, it's just silly, it's for everyone, we can all just goof off. And I go, okay, but it's harder for me to believe, and I enjoy the believing. I enjoy being kayfabed. I love it when I'm wrong. We talk about it all the time with Kevlar that we want to get a bottle of Old Crow and say that we're, de we're definitely sure that this is how something goes, and the second we're fi we found out we're wrong, we got to take a shot of Old Crow. We eat Crow, and we love getting worked. You make me believe, and I'm not, and and it's not real, and I'm a happy person, you know. Mm -hmm. I love being fooled. But anything else that you guys want to throw in there, Justin? Was there anything else you want to say about uh, about any of that? Um, again, like the good thing is about also with the with the Mount Rushmore or even the greatest of all talk. There's so many other people that you can throw in there. You can throw in Flair. You can throw in Hogan. You can throw in Eddie Guerrero. You can throw yep. in Randy Orton. You can throw in Brock Lesnar. He deserves to be in that conversation. He's done well, a lot. I had yeah. Orton, I had Orton on, on my list. But macho you know. Man. Yeah, Macho yeah. Man. Yeah. You can go back to the NWA days, start talking Dusty Rhodes. Like, there's people you can bring up for sure that mm -hmm. have every right to be in those conversations. I'm glad you threw AJ Styles in there because I feel that him and Seth Rollins get looked over a lot when you come down to, like, just quality of work and uh, I think it's not fair I think AJ should be talked about more often in the uh, greatest of all times the way the way he's able to do what he does with what he has is incredible well in 10 years they are yeah they are rough Mars they're going to be I just I think if this show was on 10 years ago and we were saying what we were saying about Stone Cold or The Rock or even Undertaker it'd be like you're fucking crazy you don't have Hogan and and, oh, yeah. and you said Bret Hart, and I didn't say Bret Hart, but I agree. I would, didn't argue one second that Bret Hart shouldn't be on there. I mean, I it, honestly, you, there's probably a top 10. You couldn't yeah. do it without top 10 because, like, you ask the wrestlers, and they're all like, this guy, uh, who's the who's the old guy? Har Harlan, Harlan? Oh, Harley Race. Harley Race. Harley Race. I hear that name all the time. Uh, you know, but, like, when, when, uh, when I was coming up, people were like, oh, fucking Terry Funk. Terry yep. Funk was the guy. Terry Funk. 
and um and then you know he kind of resurfaces in AEW with Mick Foley and stuff like that so like I uh, and you know honestly too like he the beyond the match shit that was kind of the first time you ever kind of saw what the fuck was going on behind the scenes right yeah. I mean until then they were like hey, it's not real it's it's real what are you talking about like okay and you could arguably put guys like Paul Heyman on there the amount of stuff oh, that yeah. Paul Heyman's done he for the wrestling business in general he should be on there Vince should be on there you know, you yeah. Vince should be on there. You know, uh, Triple H would even That's say true. Triple H. Triple H could easily be. That's what I say. It's oh, like yeah. you almost got to do a Mount Rushmore for okay, who who the founding Mount Rushmore? You Harley Race and you know Terry mm, yeah. Funk or whoever. And Mount then Rushmore got, by uh, decade. Night, then you got the eighties <laughs> coming of age, Mr. T, or you know Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant. You're like Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant should be on the Mount Rushmore. I mean, like, yeah. like the, I didn't have them on mine. But if you said they're going to be on there, I'd be like, okay, like, how, I'm not going to complain about that. I yeah. mean, Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan has reinvented himself so many freaking times. You know, he's come out of, you know, he's, he should call himself, you know, the Phoenix. He's, he's come out of the ashes so many times, yeah. you know. Uh, this thing with it, Hulk Hogan is nobody can ever say as much as everyone thinks he's a shitty freaking person. Right. Still can never say. And he didn't do a lot for the wrestling business. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, I, you know, I don't know anybody that knows Hulk Hogan. I, you know, it does seem to be like, he's not the most fan friendly, but I've seen some stuff with him and kids that are like adorable, you know? Yeah. So I don't know. Like, yeah. I know there was a little controversy with him and some other stuff too, that, that like, it doesn't have anything to do with wrestling. So yeah. um, that's what I'm asking to judge. I mean, he was kind of the first Andre and him, like, were the first kind of big, you know, celebrity wrestlers. You know, that you're like, oh, yeah, Hulk, you knew who Hulk Hogan was. You knew who Andre mm -hmm. the Giant was. Yeah, Roddy, Roddy Piper, too. Like, I, Roddy Piper should have been on mine. I should have had Roddy on there, honestly. I could probably take the rock off, you know, but, like, Roddy Piper should be on, you know. So do you talk the 80s or, you know, because also Macho Man. How do you get Macho mm -hmm. Man on there? He should be on there. So, like, there's so many... I just yeah. feel like he was great. And one of my hot takes is I think Roddy Piper's a better promo than The Rock. I yeah, feel like the Piper's promos were always more believable for The Rock, and The Rock's promos were always designed to sell T-shirts. <laughs> your, your head yeah. still hurts from seeing him hit whoever he hit with that coconut. Like, oh, yeah. Snooker. That, I, that yeah. shit looked real. That, that's oh, yeah. back what they thought it was. You know? So oh, yeah. I, Absolutely. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Well, Guys, I'm glad you came through and had a drink with me. I think we should all get back to our lives here. Justin Time probably still hasn't even had dinner yet, and he's fresh off of work. Nope. So we appreciate that. We appreciate you coming through. We appreciate yeah. Kiro coming through at the very end here and giving us a little Dolph Ziggler turkey, it looks like. <laughs> that's what, what it looks like in there. A Dolph Ziggler turkey, apparently. Yeah, that's what it looks like. But, guys, we will be back tomorrow night. Me, Miss Amanda Jane... Cry baby clump. We're gonna break down more of that CM Punk and MJF promo, some AEW, yes. some NXT 2.0 on a brand new episode one. But we want to say thanks to Justin Time for coming through, coming in and taking over for one half of the ironics. Shouts to Kev, just because <laughs> he's awesome. Fuck you, Kev. Stay wow. away. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, stay away. Uh, you can find uh, Justin at Justin Time Two One One, the Don of our side of the IWC, the curator, as it were, Justin Time Two One One. And with me again, thank you to Mister Sports Beard at Beard underscore Sports. Thank you for coming through, man. No problem, Gruff Marsh. Good to be here, man, as always. And thank all of you for coming through and having a drink with your drinking buddies here at WOTR, the show, Resting on the Rocks, where every show is our first show. And we will be back tomorrow night for a brand new episode one right here in the dive bar of the IWC. Guys, that's last call. Cheers. Hey, producer lady here. Thanks for tuning in. Continue to support us or buy us a drink. Our podcast on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to us. Cheers! I would never have a drink that's less than half a glass.